Sergeant Dan Hesch of the 111th Army Band. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please welcome to the podium as he will be conducting the band for Hawaii Ono'i. Please welcome the first sergeant and senior enlisted band member of the 111th Army Band, Christopher Ventura. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rainbow Warrior Marching Band pays a very special tribute to Coach Jim Jones and the 2007 Warrior football team.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the 111th Army Band of the Hawaii Army National Guard and the 2007 University of Hawaii Rainbow Warrior Marching Band. H and O, that's right, H and O. But now, the going really gets tough. As the University of Hawaii football regular season hits its most difficult stretch, the Warriors put their unbeaten record on the line against the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to our coverage of University of Hawaii football. I'm Jim Leahy along with Jim Donovan. And when you look at this game, Jim, you're looking at the passing of Hawaii against the running of Fresno State. And Fresno State is the first team since the Hawaii Bowl when Hawaii faced Arizona State that has a winning record. And they can run the ball. If they are able to run the ball, then Hawaii's passing will have to be off the field for as long as they run the ball. When you look at the two teams tonight, it seems that if Fresno State can keep up with Hawaii by moving the ball on the ground, which is primarily what they do, it'll be a close game. Jim, I definitely think that's the key. They run the ball about 60% of the time, and what they're going to count on is three running backs, but unfortunately, two of them are injured. So that'll put more pressure on their quarterback, Tom Brandstater. He's going to have to have a good game. But you know, he's known to step up to the plate against big teams. This year, their only three losses come to Texas A&M, Oregon, and Boise State. And all three of those games, he had a big game, Jim. People are not even arguing anymore that the Hawaii receiving core is the best in the nation. And the reason for that is once they catch the pass, they run with the ball and they run for fantastic yardage. Cole Brennan tonight is only two career touchdowns away from the NCAA all-time record of 121 held by Ty Detmer. So the Hawaii receiving court tonight, if they are on their game and Cole Brennan is on his game, Hawaii could be celebrating their ninth win in a row. When we come back, we'll get things started. Tough, rough, Fresno State against Hawaii. This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom. Hawaiian Telecom high-speed internet is still the best value in town. 
It's $19.99 a month for the first year. To connect, call 643-0805. Let's take a look at the keys to the game sponsored. Can the Bulldogs keep up? Let's take a look at the keys to tonight's game, sponsored by Kaiser Permanente. Try. Well, for Fresno State, can they keep up with the Warriors? The Warriors lead the nation in scoring offense at 51.9 points a game. They need Clifton Smith, Lonnie Miller, and Ryan Matthews to have a great night at running back. And for the Warriors, can they dominate the front seven? The Warrior O-line has to step it up and control the line of scrimmage. This is likely the best front seven they have played since last season. Special concern, number 11, Tyler Klutz, and number 94, John Munga. Injury report sponsored by HMSA, working for a healthier Hawaii. Fresno State, Ryan Matthews is not 100%. He did warm up, but he may play, he may not play. Bear Pasco will play, but he is suffering from an injury. And then Keao Monte and Kealoa Polaris, they will not play for Hawaii. Hawaii won the toss. And they have elected to receive. Fresno State will defend the south end zone. Hawaii comes in undefeated 8-0. They are one of only two teams now in the country undefeated. Ohio State losing today to Illinois. Kansas the other, Seal, the other team, Jim. Yep, and uh, they are playing late now, and they have a short lead as we speak this is going to be a rivalry game these two teams have really gone at each other with relish over the years here's the team comparison for fresno state you can see the scoring average hawaii a whopping 51.9 rushing the uh, advantage goes to fresno state but in passing it's all hawaii total offense all hawaii average points allowed very very tight there the average uh, yards allowed to Hawaii with the advantage and the turnover margin. Fresno State is dead last in the whack and turnover margin. So we'll see what happens. This is a big test for Hawaii. They have maneuvered their way into almost a pinnacle status in college football. And we'll see if they can keep it going tonight. This is the 40th meeting. Fresno State leads the series 20-18-1. You go back 2001 here, double overtime victory, Hawaii. Ashley Lalee getting the pass in the end zone to win it. Hawaii last year, big 67 to 38. 
But in 2004, 70 to 14 at Fresno in favor of the Bulldogs. Jason Rivers and Malcolm Lane will receive for Hawaii to start things off. Clint Stitzer will kick off. And the crowd really getting into it. Crowd still arriving. We begin. Malcolm Lane. Malcolm Lane ankle tackle as he gets to the 22 yard line. Making the stop was Nick Bates, number 30 on the special teams. So Hawaii starting here. Colt Brennan is the quarterback. You can see his statistics there, 225 of 328, 2,820 yards, 26 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. And when you look at his career mark, he has passed for over 12,670 yards, 119 touchdowns. So this is the biggest game of the year for Hawaii. A lot on the line. David Farmer starting in the backfield with Colt Brennan. Ball is on the 23. Triple wide receiver to the right. And Colt to pass with time. That's complete to Bess. 30, close to the first down. Excellent start for Hawaii. Here are the starters for Hawaii, Asun Saatele, Estes, Sawafea, Steinhoff in that front line. And then the skilled players, Rivers, Bess, Grice, Mullen, Hawthorne, and Farmer. Brennan, of course, is the quarterback. Well, right now, the Bulldogs are actually playing a dime defense. They've got six defensive backs in the game. That's a switch from the normal 4-3. Daniel Libre has gone in at running back. His first play gets the pass to Ryan Grice Mullen. And Grace Mullins very close to the first down. Caudir Brown, two, uh, ten, a 210 pound sophomore from Lake Elsinore, California. The six footer making the uh, stop for Fresno State. The defensive starters, that front four, Ramos, Tolbert, Monga, and Klutz. The linebackers, Riley, Jacobson, Brown. And the defensive backs, Jenkins, Harris, Hayes, and Owens. Klutz leads as far as sacks concerned. And Marcus Riley leads in tackles with 94. Second down and 10 for Hawaii. Throws long, wide open. It's Jason Rivers. 10, 5, touchdown. Jason Rivers gets behind the defensive coverage right there. He's wide open and he walks it into the end zone. That is career touchdown number 120 for the quarterback, Colt Brennan. As far as Jason Rivers is concerned, that's his seventh touchdown of the season. And Rivers, as far as his career is concerned, is amazing. The extra point is good by Kelly. Hawaii, shockingly quick. 7-0 over Fresno State.
67 yard touchdown throw. Or they are calling it now 77 yard touchdown. Well, 67 yards, but the, the drive, three plays, 77 yards, and only a minute and 26 into the game. Rivers now has caught a pass in 46 straight games. 46 straight. Central Pacific Bank sponsors the loyalty award by donating $100 for every touchdown. Hawaii scores. Central Pacific Bank fiercely loyal banking. Kelly will kick off. A.J. Jefferson, who had an 88-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the 38-27 win over Utah State. He will take it at the goal line, and here he comes, and he's dangerous. At the 30, all the way out to the 38-yard line. That's one thing that Fresno State does well, field position. They start with excellent field position on almost every possession. C.J. Hawthorne. There to make the stop. CJ playing on the special teams defense. So here comes Fresno State. They've been shot. They're down seven to nothing. Tom Brandstater is the quarterback. 140 of 233, 1,642 yards and nine touchdowns on the season. So he comes out to lead Fresno State. Lanyon Miller is the single setback. In motion is Kinter, the tight end. This is Miller. Miller into the Hawaii secondary gain on the play close to five yards. Fale La Ele there to make the stop. This is the offense for Fresno State. Lapori, Popovich, Wendell, Jackson, and Avon. And then the skill positions. Pasco, he's dangerous. Crawley, Ajiro Tutu, Adams, Miller, and Bram Stater. Wendell is starting way up there as far as consecutive games is, is concerned. And the center, the center. This is Smith with a direct snap, and Smith close to the first down. And the Hawaii defense coming your way. This defense will be tested tonight, that's for sure. Purcell, Laele, Lafaele, and Noah, the front forward, Leonard Ilamimi, and then Kalili Moku, the linebackers, Newberry, Thomas, Kotek, and Lewis in the defensive secondary. Ilamimi is the leading tackler on the, this team with 90. First down for Fresno State at the 49-yard line. Fresno State comes out in a wide pass formation. They throw. That's complete to Pasco to the 40, to the 39-yard line. That's a first down. Gain on the play of 12. Well, the Bulldogs just trying to do ball control offense, which is what we expected them to do when they got in here tonight. They're going to run it mostly, but they'll also throw it. They want to eat the clock and move the ball and keep up with the Warriors on the scoreboard. Pasco, 75-yard touchdown run after a reception last year at Fresno. He also had a 20-yard touchdown reception. Okay, he is one of the leading tight ends in the nation as far as receiving is concerned. Fresno comes out in four wides. This is the Hawaii offensive set. First down on the 39-yard line. Brand Stater gives the ball to Clifton Smith. And Clifton Smith cannot turn the corner. Jacob Pacek was there to force him back in. Well, the Warriors started in their base 4-3 and have moved to their nickelback package with five DBs. Trying to slow down this Bulldog offense. Lonle Miller back in the backfield. Brandstetter. Second down, long yardage, second and seven. The ball is given to Miller. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Solomon Elamimian. Great fill by Solomon Elamimian. Just comes up and puts the hurt on. Elamimian out of Los Angeles, out of Crenshaw High School. Take a look at it again. Because uh, Miller really got met. He was met. Third down, long yardage. Marlon Moore is to the far side. And to the near side is Ajiro Tutu. Now they change. They put three wide receivers on the right side. Nobody is covering the middle man right now. Hawaii looks confused. They call a timeout. So Hawaii uses up one of their timeouts on third and long yardage with 10.49 left to play in the first quarter. Hawaii leading 7-0.
Throughout his 11 years at Fresno State, Pat Hill has felt the same way about his opponents. Bring him on. This week's Geico quote of the game is something Pat Hill has said for quite some time. Quote, we could win a lot of games if we schedule ourselves that way. Our program has to play the best and beat the best to be considered the best. Unquote. And he will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. And he has the longest tenure in the Western Athletic Conference, 11 years. So here comes yet another formation for Fresno State. Third down and seven from the Hawaii 36 yard line. Smith and A.J. Jefferson are in the backfield for Fresno State. The Warriors in their Oki defense. That's a 3 3 5 front. In motion is a Jiro Tutu. Now, a penalty flies. A legal shift. Ball start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty remains third down. Bill Lathan is the referee tonight. And it was an illegal motion that moves the ball back to the 41 yard line. It is now third down and 12. Moore is to the far side. They keep shifting. Double wide receiver to the near side. Brand Stater in the shotgun. Looking for a man pattern. He fumbles the ball. Picks it up. And now throws and throws it away. It was intended for Clifton Smith. Great pressure by Adam Leonard. It will be fourth down. Never had control of the ball. Jim started running probably before he actually caught it. Good thing he picked it up on the bounce. That could have turned into a big warrior play. Myron Newberry will back up. And punting will be Kyle Zimmerman. Zimmerman with a 40.8 average. Excellent hang time coming down coming down and that goes out of bounds at the 15 yard line. So Hawaii scores on their first possession. Fresno State does not and Hawaii takes over on about the 17 24 yard punt and we'll see what Colt Brennan does now. It's 67 yard touchdown pass to Jason Rivers. Daniel Libre has come in to the game again Libre in that uh, Offensive backfield. Libre getting his first action. Hawthorne is ranked is, is flanked to the near side. Triple wide receiver to the far side. Three man front. Four man front now for Fresno State. Ball is given to Libre looking for the hole. Gets the hole. He's at the 20, 25. Ankle tackles at the 30 yard line. Marcus Riley saved what could have been disaster on that run by Libre. Libre calling Hercules Satelli on the lead block right there. Lock blocking linebacker. Pops up for a nice game. 13 yard gain on his first run from scrimmage from Holua Law on the Big Island right above Kona. It will be first and 10 for Hawaii at their own 30 yard line. David Farmer now has gone into the backfield. With Colt Brennan, triple wide receiver to the left. Colt Brennan with time throws. That's complete. And being forced out of bounds by Moses Harris is Devon Bess. Bess came into the game with 60 receptions for 748 yards. He has two receptions in this particular first quarter. And he has seven touchdowns on the season. So it is second down for Hawaii second down and six on the ball at the 34 yard line. So Hawaii comes out they overload the right side single coverage on the on those receivers. The offensive line has been given uh, Brennan some time Brennan steps up steps up looks looks a chase out of the pocket comes to the near side throw sideline it is incomplete.
Going out of bounds over there was Hawthorne, and he's helped up by the Fresno State benches. Very good job by the Warrior offensive line. The Fresno State Bulldogs had a four-man rush. They have a good front seven and a good front four, but the Warrior offensive line did a very nice job of giving Colt Brennan an amazing amount of time. That's one thing that June Jones said during the course of this week. He is so impressed with the front seven of Fresno State that he says, we have really got the block well. We've got the block the best we have ever blocked over the course of this season. Third down, long yardage. Third and about six. Again with time. Throw that is complete the best, and he catches it just enough for the first down at the 41 yard line. So Hawaii converting on third down, seven yard pickup. It's so impressive. The Warrior receivers, they know right where the first down marker is, and every single one of them makes sure they're past it on third down. So if they got a chance to catch the ball, they know it'll be a first down. 939 left to play in the first quarter. If you just joined a 67-yard touchdown pass early in the game to Jason Rivers. Away leading 7 to nothing as you relive uh, the catch there by Bess. In motion is Bryce Mullins. Double wides, Mullins on the wing. Brennan looks, lays it off. That is complete to Leon Wright Jackson. Jackson has the first down. And he is forced out of bounds inside Fresno State territory on the 44. Marcus Riley and Moses Harris forced him out. 15-yard pickup. And another first down for Hawaii. Well, the Bulldogs have settled into a nickel coverage. And what happened that time was the wide receiver actually ran the defensive backs out of the zone, allowing the whole area out here to be clear. And a nice job picking up some positive yardage. Variation on the theme with that last formation for Hawaii. First down at the 44-yard line of Fresno State. In motion now is best. This looks like the Nevada Pistol offense. Brennan throws. That's complete to Wright Jackson. And Jackson is upended at the 40-yard line. That'll bring up second down and six. Moses Harris out of Stockton, California. 6'11", 200. Found sophomore made the stop for Fresno State. And through these passes, Hawaii is controlling the clock, Jim. No, they're controlling the whole game so far. Um, either a quick strike in their first series or just, like you said, Jim, grinding it out and getting positive yards in the first downs right now. Rivers is to the far side. Rivers against uh, Damian Owens. Single coverage. Owens is the only defensive back that has an interception this year for Fresno State. And Hawaii may have taken too much time. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Well, the Bulldogs walked up into show blitz, Jim, and I wonder if uh, the, there was a slight audible there and they ran out of time. But at the last minute, the Bulldogs were bringing two linebackers on the Warrior left-hand side. Oh, this is a real chess match between these two coaches. I mean, they are very good friends, fast friends. But when they oppose each other, it is a chess match. It's war. Second down and 11. Because of the delay of game penalty. All day. Throws, that's complete. Complete to Jason Rivers. Rivers was double covered. No problem. Very close to the first down. They may have it. Inside the 35 to the 33 yard line of Fresno State. 12 yard pickup. Brennan has gone to work early. He is 8 of 9 for 119 yards and one touchdown. Last year against Fresno State, he threw for over 400 yards and three touchdowns. 409 yards last year. First down from the 33 yard line of Fresno State. Hawaii with the double wide receivers. Ball is given on the delay, and with it is uh, number four, Leon Wright Jackson. Jackson breaking it with a clear touchdown. A perfect call play. The Bulldogs actually stunted away from where the play was going, Jim, and left a wide open hole for Leon Wright Jackson. You can see them all stunt away, and it allows a very big hole. Wright Great Jackson. Call. Good power running that time by. Like Jackson, he was determined to get into the end zone, and he did. The transfer from Nebraska, 33-yard touchdown run. 
Comes into the game with uh, 26 carries. His 27th was a joy. Kick is up and it is good. Hawaii now leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Hawaii, eight plays, 83 yards, two minutes and 44 seconds of elapsed time. Right, Jackson, a 33-yard touchdown run, exploding up the middle and then exploding into the end zone. A.J. Jefferson is deep for Fresno State. Jefferson, against Utah State, had three returns, and his total was 158 yards. So he's back there as a very dangerous returner. And we say that again. Dan Kelly kicking off. Jefferson backs up three yards into the end zone, and here he comes. Jefferson stumbles a bit at about the 15, weaves his way out over the 25, and we have a penalty flood. In the area of a block in the back or holding, usually on the kickoff return. Uh, La Tule La Pepa was there to make the tackle on the special team's first down for Fresno State. We'll explore the flag here. Bill Lathan comes out from under the goalpost. During the return, holding on the receiving team, number three. Ten yards from the spot. First down. Called it on Moses Harris. So the penalty moves the ball back inside the 20, and it will be first down for Fresno State. Hawaii leading 14 to nothing. 67-yard touchdown pass to Jason Rivers and a 33-yard run by Leon Wright Jackson. Here comes Fresno State. Offset I formation behind Grand Stater. Hands the ball and hit at the line of scrimmage. But he gets forward. He may have, uh, let's see if he uh, had uh, possession all the way on that. Running the ball was uh, Lanya Miller. Apparently did hold on to the ball. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Looks like he runs right into Ryan Wendell, the center, but bounces off and gets some positive yardage. Yeah, ran into his own man, and then everybody was uh, looking for Miller, and he was able to turn it into a good game. Second down and three. In motion is Zinter. Ball is given up the middle. Very short game. Adam Leonard was there to make the stop. That time it was Miller again. 
UH linebackers do such a good job of filling on running plays. Once they read run, they step up and they hit that running back and let them know we don't want you here. Greg McMacken, the defensive coordinator. Third down, short yardage for Fresno State. 6.36 left to play in the first quarter. Hawaii leading 14 to nothing. Pasco, flip flop, the tight end. They overload the right side. With the ball is Miller. He's hit! Behind the line of scrimmage, and they drive him back. Adam Leonard leading the charge. We have a penalty flag. The Warriors doing a great job reacting to the ball. That was just a typical spread you out to the sideline, find a hole run by the running back, and there was nothing there. Holding offense, number 62. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Take another look at this. Remember, they've overloaded the right side, and Miller just gets popped. So it is fourth down for Fresno State. And Kyle Zimmerman is in to punt. Zimmerman from Visalia, California. Longest punt has been 61 yards. He needs to loop this one. Gets it in the air, not long at all. Calling for the fair catch is Bess. And Hawaii will have, you talk about excellent field position. Hawaii will have it very close to midfield. 27 yard punt and no return. Aloha Airlines would like to say aloha to the Warriors seniors for all their contributions to the University of Hawaii football program and wish them success during the remainder of the regular season and then into the bowl season. Aloha Airlines is a proud supporter of University of Hawaii athletes. First down for Hawaii. Golden opportunity here. They have it at their own 49 yard line. Let's see if they go long. This is what June Jones likes to do. He gets an advantage. He gets field position. He may want to tack another one up on the scoreboard with a long pattern. We'll see. Back to pass. The throw. That is complete to Jason Rivers. And Rivers short of the first down. Game of the play of seven. So Brandon is now 9 for 10 in passing. Damian Owens playing defense for Fresno State. And the Bulldog coverage, Jim, is playing fairly soft. They're showing a lot of respect for this receiving core, but that allows them just to get those 7, 8, 10 yard catches every single time. Hawaii comes out and they overload the right side. David Farmer back there with Cope Brennan. Brennan again with time. Throws. That's complete to Bryce Mullins. This could be interesting. Down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Great block by Bess. Lauren Bell finally figured things out. 22 yard game for Hawaii. Well, as we were saying earlier, Jim, you have to be very impressed with how the Warrior offensive line is playing. Fresno is up there with the four man front almost every single time, and nobody is getting near Colt Brennan. They put it down. We'll take another look here. Watch this block. Devon Vest with an excellent block. First down carry after the catch by Grice Mullins. Ball is on the 22. Brennan looking for Rivers, looking for Rivers. Now checks off, throws. It is caught at the three yard line. C.J. Hawthorne. And again, all kinds of time for the receivers to run their full routes, to clear zone coverage, get away if it's man coverage. As long as the offensive line keeps on giving Colt Brennan time like this, he's going to smash the record. Look at the time that he has looking, going through his progressions, and then you talk about accuracy right there, right before the sideline to Hawthorne. And the ball is on the three. Asun, Saad Telly, Estes, Sawafea, Steinhoff. What a job they're, they're doing here in the first quarter. Farmer is in the backfield. The throw into the end zone, hit into the air. He tried to find Bryce Mullen through actually into double coverage. Try to force that one. Kadir Brown and Marcus Riley back defensively. This is where the yards really get scrunched down. It's tough when you get within four or five yards of the end zone, Jim. You've got such a condensed area. 
you've got two players right there. It allows the defensive backs to be able to react very quickly. And it's just difficult to make passing touchdowns this close. Not impossible. The Warriors have done it a lot, though. Under center again is Brennan. Farmer behind him. Brennan running, running close to the goal line, and Brennan scores. Three yard touchdown run by Colt Brennan. That's his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Away now leads 20 to nothing. We're still in the first quarter with five minutes and 14 seconds left. Kelly is in to try the extra point. Ball is placed by Grasso. Kick is up and it is good. I turn to you. People thought this was going to be a real test of the Warriors but so far they have dominated in every statistic in every category against Fresno State a team that comes in with a powerful reputation absolutely Jim they're dominating every aspect of the game special teams has not been special for Fresno they've had one decent return the rest of it nothing there the Warriors on offense just moving the ball at will and the defense has stymied the running backs stymied their quarterback so far in the first 10 minutes of this game it's been all Warriors 21 to nothing in Hawaii they have dominated from the beginning 67 yard touchdown pass to Jason Rivers 33 yard run right up the middle by Leon Wright Jackson and then a three yard power plunge into the end zone by the quarterback Colt Brennan Brennan talking to June Jones look at those numbers Jim 33 yards for Fresno, 216 for UH. That is just amazing. AJ Jefferson again deep for Fresno State. Picking off is Dan Kelly. Waiting for it is Jefferson. He will take it on the two. Jefferson goes sideline, and they have the wall set up for him. Jefferson out in the open, and he will score. No one will catch it. Fresno State comes back, and they are stunningly quick. A 99-yard kickoff return. Well, you knew they could do it. They they practice their special teams probably as much as any team in the country. They're known for what they do on special teams. And as you said last week, AJ Jefferson had a great week against Utah State, and another nice run back there. Nice blocking by that kickoff return team. 98 yards officially they come out in a spread for the point after and now they'll go back into the kicking formation this is just cute this is just cute 501 left in the first period it's now 21 to 6 Stitzer kicks it through and it is now 21 to 7 this is just, I mean, it's textbook. Watch the double team block right there. That springs him. The last block on Dan Kelly. And he was the last safety guy to try and slow down the runner so that other people could catch up and uh, just clipped him enough so he got off balance and fell down. Touchdown, Jefferson. Well, quite frankly, that gives Fresno State some dignity. I mean, they were just getting Owned. overpowered. But they come back with a 98-yard kickoff return by A.J. Jefferson out of Bakersfield, California. He is second in the nation in kickoff returns. He comes in with a 36-yard average. And he leads the whack, of course, in that category. And he's just solidified that status with a 98-yard return. Jason Rivers and Malcolm Lane are deep for Hawaii. Hawaii leading 21 to 7. So there's been just one glitch in Hawaii's performance. And that was that uh, brilliant kickoff return. Weiss has to answer back here. Stitzer will kick off. Stitzer kicks it short. Malcolm Lane at the seven. Lane gets to the 24 yard line. And down he goes. 
Jared Stutz there to make the stop for Fresno State on the special team. So Hawaii goes back to work. They have been literally flawless in their offense. Brennan has had all day almost seen his savings account mature <laughs> as, he, as he looks for uh, receivers. No, you got this. You got this. Here comes Hawaii. Yeah. Hawthorne comes to the near side. David Farmer is in the shotgun along with Brennan. Seven men, eight men in the box. Brennan back to pass, looks long, throws over the middle. That's complete the pass. That's at midfield. That's at the 40. That's at the 30. That's trying to score. Finally, they catch him at the 26 yard line. You put that many men in the box and you don't get to Brennan, you're dead. 49 yard catch and run by Bess. Marcus Riley finally caught up to him. Well, the Bulldog defensive coordinator just trying to do everything possible to stop the Warriors, and nothing's working. Right there, they were in their normal 4-3 personnel front and bumped their outside linebackers to try and cover the slot backs. That hasn't worked for any BCS program that came in here, and it's not going to work for Fresno. Brennan is now 12 of 14, 215 yards on a touchdown. He has scored a touchdown running. That's in motion. Double wides. Brennan back to pass, throws. That is going to be complete at the 10-yard line to Ryan Bryce Mullen. 17-yard pickup. Hawaii coming right back after that electrifying kickoff return by A.J. Jefferson. 4-17 left to play. We're still in the first quarter. The key to all of these completions, especially the deep ones, is how much time Colt Brennan is getting to throw the ball. It's just amazing. I mean, the Bulldogs have a very good front seven, but the Warriors are just outplaying them in every facet. Daniel Libre has come in right behind Colt Brennan. Brennan gives it to Libre on a delay. Lib Libre angles off the left side and then gets pushed down inside the 10 yard line to about the eight. Right there, you saw the athleticism of Tyler Klutz, who actually was coming off the edge, looked like he was going to go after the quarterback, and was able to turn and come back and tackle Daniel Libre. They say he runs a 4-5-40, and he can play anywhere on the defensive front. Now he is an outstanding player, and has been over the course of his competition against the University of Hawaii. Number 11, Klutz. They fake it to Libre, throw into the end zone. Incomplete, is there interference? No call. It was intended for Ryan Grice Mullins. That'll bring up third down. Well, this is a big play for the Bulldogs right here, Jim. They haven't stopped the Warriors so far this evening. It would be a moral victory then if they could stop the Warriors from getting into the end zone and force them into a field goal situation. Hawaii has already exceeded what Fresno State usually allows in passing per game. You see 232 yards. Big third down play here for Hawaii. Ball is inside the 10 to the 9. Back to pass Brennan. Throws into the end zone. Incomplete. We're thrown high. Was intended for C.J. Hawthorne. And it looked like C.J. had his man beat by a couple of steps. The ball was just a little high there. So here comes Dan Kelly, six for nine in field goals. And of course, he had that 54 yarder. So Kelly trying to tack on three here, which would mean that every time that Hawaii has had the ball here in the first quarter, they have scored. It will be a 25 yarder. Grasso waiting for the hole, places it down, the kick is up. And it is good. Hawaii now leads 24 to seven over Fresno State, still in the first quarter, still with three minutes and 27 seconds left. So Hawaii doesn't answer back in kind, but they do answer back. And very much moving the ball effectively, running, passing. You gotta be happy how Daniel Libre is playing so far this evening, coming in and running back, his first real opportunity this season. 
And you cannot really say enough so far, Jim, about what this Warrior offensive line has been doing to the front seven of the Bulldogs. This look at the UH record book is sponsored by Public Storage with eight convenient locations in Hawaii. 120 touchdowns, one behind Ty Detmer of BYU. Timmy Chang is third. Tim Rattay of uh, Louisiana Tech is fourth. Danny Werfel of Florida is fifth. And Colt Brennan has positioned himself one touchdown away from tying Ty Detmer. The all-time career touchdown mark of 121. Guess who's waiting for the kickoff? A.J. Jefferson. Ball kicked off again by Kelly. Jefferson waiting, waiting. Takes it on the two. Here he comes. Jefferson angles back and he gets belted. At about the 22 yard line, Timo Paipuli, there, Paipuli, I should say, Timo Paipuli was there to give him a shot. Warriors very disciplined that time, coming down in their lanes, not allowing a large gap to happen like the kickoff return before, and uh, shutting them down. So here comes Fresno State, Brian Stater. In a catch-up mood here as they are behind 24 to 7 in the first quarter. Adjustments, no doubt, will be made on the part of both teams. Anthony Harding in the backfield. Brand Stater with time throws long, and this one is caught over the shoulder. Great catch by uh, Lanya Miller out around midfield. That time, Brand Stater. Who can throw the ball? There's no doubt about that at time. Brent doing sort of a semi pump fake there, trying to get the corner to bite. Newberry does a little, and a nice completion for the Bulldogs. Newberry covering on the play. Ball is at the 49 yard line of Hawaii. The Fresno State can open it up now. Ball is given on a reverse. With it is Moore. Marlon Moore. He's in trouble. And he's slammed down. Slammed down by Ryan Mouton. The Warriors do it. I mean, excuse me. The Bulldogs do a direct snap to number two. Coming back with a reverse. Great discipline by the Warrior defense. Sitting there where they need to be. Covering their responsibilities on contain and reverse. Second down, long yardage. Second down and 16. And they try to come around the near side. And with the ball is number 10, Tim Lang, the wide receiver. And he does not get back to the original line of scrimmage. He is stopped at the 48-yard line by Amani Purcell. That'll bring up a big third down play here. You have to wonder if the Bulldogs are getting a little fancy here with some of the reverses and the things that we're looking at, the direct snaps, because the Warriors are doing such a good job of playing smash mouth football with them. I think they're just trying to open up the defense for this play. Here they come. Double wide receiver to the left. Third down, long yardage. Brand Stager, four man pattern. Brand Stater's in trouble. They sack him. 29th sack of the year for Hawaii. Brad Kalilimoku got to him. Brad Kalilimoku off the edge, unblocked, untouched. Kalilimoku came into this game with a half a sack. Well, he got that one. Excellent defense by Hawaii on three straight plays. Devon Bess is deep. And Kyle Zimmerman will punt it to him. White leading 24 to 7. A minute 16 left to play in the first quarter. There's the punt. Here comes Bass calling for the fair catch. Takes it at the 20 yard line. And Hawaii will go to work there. We have seen extraordinary play by the Hawaii football team tonight in all facets, except for one play. And that was a 98-yard kickoff return by A.J. Jefferson of Fresno State. 38-yard kick, no return. 
Receive updates, ticket discounts, special offers, and much more each week signing up for HMAIL. To register, visit HawaiiAthletics.com and click on the HMAIL button. It's easy and it's free. So Hawaii goes back to work. They come out with three wide receivers in tight to the left side. And throws long over the middle. It is incomplete. It was intended for C.J. Hawthorne. And right with him and running with him was uh, Robert Malone. The Bulldogs run a twist on the offensive line. It's the first time they've gotten pressure on Brennan. Hit him right as he was throwing the ball. That was Charles Tolbert hitting Brennan right as he threw the ball. That's the first time he's been touched tonight. Almost the whole quarter. Second down and 10 for Hawaii. Under a minute to play in the first quarter. Hawaii has posted 24 points. Leon Wright Jackson right behind Brennan. Brennan backs up, steps up into the pocket, in trouble, and they get him. That's the 29th sack for Fresno State. Both teams came into this game with 28. Well, that's the old adage. If it worked to play before, let's try it again. They run another twist stunt up on the front. Mike Cheese there to make uh, the uh, tackle, make the uh, sack. That'll bring up third down. Third down and the 11. So there you see the adjustments coming in. Better protection in the defensive secondary. And a big play here. With 20, 19 seconds left, final seconds of the first quarter. Brennan in trouble. They sack him again inside the 10. And we have a penalty flag. So a personal foul. Chris Carter, number 91, able to come in and get him. Here's Bill Aitham. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Boy, that pumps new life into Hawaii. This is a terrible penalty by Carter. Took the helmet off. Absolutely did not need to grab his face mask. He had Colt dead to rights on the pass rush alone. Again, another twist up front. So the Warriors are going to see a lot more of that. Three twists. One pressure on the quarterback, two sacks. They're going to have to adjust. The Warrior offensive line is going to have to adjust to this twisting. We play the quarter. Hawaii leading 24 to 7. When we come back, Hawaii will have first down on their own 34 yard line.
This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored by Hawaiian Telecom. Hawaiian Telecom high-speed internet is still the best value in town. It's $19.99 a month for the first year. To connect, call 643-0805. Well, they call this because uh, it, if you look closely, it was not the face mask, but any opening on the helmet is considered a face mask penalty. And that's what uh, Carter did there, Chris Carter. And there you see Bill Athan saying, you know, he grabbed him there. He can't do that. Yeah, I don't think he grabbed it. From my perspective, he just uh, sort of tackled him at the back of his head. And that was probably a, a looser chin strap. And I think that was a nice break for the Warriors. Hawaii with new life. First down from their own 34. The ball is given to Leon Wright Jackson. And Jackson is hit at the line of scrimmage. Good job there by Marcus O'Reilly, the leading tackler for Fresno State. He had 14 tackles against Utah State, 15 uh, tackles against uh, Boise State. And showing his cat quick moves there, coming up, uh, just exploding on the play to make the tackle before that Tampa could develop. Malcolm Lane is flanked to the far side. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 for Hawaii. All of a sudden, Fresno State has become very feisty defensively. Brennan, here comes the blitz. Brennan gives it on the sweep to the near side. And with it is Daniel Libre. And Libre all the way over at midfield to the 44-yard line of Fresno State. You talk about calling a play at the exact right moment, 22 yards. It was this one because the blitz was coming. And there you see Libre turning the corners. The blitz was chasing him and going for good yardage. Larry saw fail with a very good block. Larry right there coming across, ending up kicking out. Lauren Bell finally caught him. First down for the Warriors. They have the ball at the 44-yard line of Fresno State. Triple wide receiver to the right. Four-man front. Ball again is given to Daniel Libre. And Libre wiggles cat-like to the 39. In the play of five, Wiley, Marcus Wiley again there to make the tackle for Fresno State. Well, the impressive thing about Daniel Libre is as soon as he reads the whole opening, he immediately goes north-south and turns up the speed and, and gets positive yardage. What looked like it might have been a tackle for a no game ends up being second and five. David Farmer now back in the shotgun with Brennan. The motion is best. Triple wide receiver to the right. Brennan looking that way, throws. That's complete to Bryce Mullins. Mullins dancing for the first down and gets to the 33 yard line. Moving, they have the ball now at the 33 of Fresno State. They lead 24 to 7. Some great moves there by Ryan. Hawthorne has flanked to the far side, to the near side is the Rivers. Bess and Bryce Mullins in the slot to the left. Libre back in on the shotgun. Next to Brennan. Brennan looks, throws, that's complete to Libre. Blockers in front of it. To the 25. Libre to the 20. And the first down. Excuse me, not Libre. Bess. Devon Bess. So not Libre, but Bess. Bess is a little bigger, in fact. But a good play nonetheless for Hawaii. Brennan is having quite a night. 15 of 20, 251 yards. And one touchdown. Hawthorne and Bess, along with Bryce Mullins, are flanked to the left. Jason Rivers, double coverage on Jason Rivers. Brennan waiting for the snap. Here comes the blitz. Brennan gives the ball, and this is Libre. Libre breaking tackles all the way to the five-yard line. 15-yard pickup by Libra. Coach Jones said this week, he says, you know, I'm going to unveil a surprise against Fresno State. You won't believe who it is. It's Libre. Libre, who had never played before. He's making a mark. 
just runs right through the tackle of Marvin Hayes the free safety just shows a power that he has unleashing the weapon first down and goal to go David Farmer back with Brennan double wide receivers Brennan looking end zone looking end zone he may run now he throws and he throws it out of the reach of the intended receiver all alone was Rivers. That was a true run pass option once he started scrambling because it looked like he could have made it either way. Number 19 comes up to make him toss the ball, Marvin Hayes. Perhaps too much adrenaline that time for Brennan. It is second down, goal to go, the ball at the five yard line. David Farmer, along with Brennan, the overload the right side, Brennan. Looking, looking, ends on throws, end zone, touchdown! Devon Betts! <laughs> and he has tied Ty Detmer for career touchdowns. 121. And it goes to Devon Bess. And Bess now has caught 39 touchdown passes in his career. Kicking the extra point is Kelly. Away now leads 31 to 7. The perfect treat. The perfect treat for all the home games. Click on BigIslandCandies.com to try the new Kohala Brownie Assortment. Well, Colt Brennan has done it again. He has tied Ty Detmer 121 career touchdowns. And in total touchdowns responsible, that means running and passing, he has also tied Ty Detmer 135. What? There you see the uh, scoring drive. 80 yards, 10 plays, 4 minutes and 38 minutes of elapsed, uh, 38 seconds of elapsed time. And the uh, touchdown pass is uh, to Bess. He's untaping that ankle. What a performance. And still 11.26 left to play in the first half. A.J. Jefferson. We'll try it again. He's done it once already. 98 yards comes up and he takes it on the three. Tries this side as blocking. But they grab him and down he goes at the 20 yard line. Eric Peterson on the special teams made the tackle on A.J. Jefferson. Look at this total offense now. 348 yards for Hawaii, 52 for Fresno State. 
Here come the Bulldogs. That's just amazing. Brian Stater. And uh, Lanye Miller behind him. Single setback. On the wing now is Pasco. Ball is given to Miller. Banging his way into the secondary. Keeping his feet. And gets all the way out to the 37 yard line before they hold his progress. 17 yard gain on a first down. Excellent run by Miller. Well, actually, Jim, I expect to see more of that right from the beginning of the game. That's just good old fashioned smash mouth football. Line the tight end up as a wing back and turn him into a lead blocker. Bear Pasco is one big lead blocker. First and 10 from the 36. This is Miller again. Miller picking his way into the secondary. Excellent run. Jacob Patek finally figured it out. So an excellent uh, run on first down. That'll advance the ball to the 42-yard line. And it will be second down. And about four for Fresno State. Jason Crawley to the far side. Single coverage on Crawley. High formation behind Brian Stater. Again, it is given to the tailback. This time it is Clifton Smith. And Smith is hit to the turf close to the first down. They call him Batman. He's worn a T-shirt since high school that says Batman on it. And he refers to it every now and then by pointing at himself. Well, if you're a Warrior fan, you've got to be impressed how the Warriors are stepping up and playing smash mouth football right back with these Bulldogs. They're giving ground grudgingly, and they can afford to give some ground with the score being 31 to 7. Marlon Moore flanked to the far side. They come out in double wings. Single setback, Clifton Smith. First down, it is Smith. Smith finds a hole, angles off the right side, and is spun to the turf. By Solomon Illuminium. Second down and seven. Bank of Hawaii recognizes excellence on the field of play. And tonight we'll be selecting a member from each team as the game's most valuable players. Sponsored by the Bank of Hawaii. Second down, six and a half. Emotion is Zinter. They throw. That is complete to Moore. Moore looking for the first down. He gets the first down and is tossed into the Hawaii bench population. And that's a first down for Fresno State. 9.04 left to play. Hawaii leading 30. Nice lead one to seven. By Isaac Kinter. Getting out there in front. Getting a block on Myron Newberry. Allowing for the first down. Miller has come back in as Fresno State putting together a drive. You talk about a variation on a the theme. Fresno State's been all over the place as far as formations are concerned. Keeping the ball. Brad Stetler. Oh, all kinds of time. And Brad Stetler fake pump fake and then was hit by, by a Blaze Suarez. Talk about a guy that's playing through adversity. I mean, he's got hamstring issues, shoulder issues, but Blaze only has one speed. That's full speed. Boy, he just showed up out of nowhere. Second down and 17. The ball is at midfield for Fresno State. Double wides to the left. Brand Stater looks, throws over the middle. That's complete with runners in front of him. And with it is Smith. Clifton Smith still on his feet. Clifton Smith to the 25 to the 24. And they ride him to the turf there. Excellent screen over the middle that time uh, by Fresno State. 26 yard game. Well, it's a chess match, as you said, Jim. Uh, letting the penetration come through, getting three lead blockers. And Smith does a very, very nice job of continuing to read to the open field. Picking up a first down. Clifton Smith is from Fresno. He's out of Edison High School. 
First down on just inside the 25 yard line for Fresno State. This is Miller. And Miller to a short game. Miller upset there by Ryan Mouton. We well, you know Jim, I can appreciate the drive that the Bulldogs are putting together here, but the reality is they're down by 24 points, and this eats up tons and tons of clock, and I don't see them stopping the Warrior offense. They need to try and put some scores together here. That held desperately trying to find some answers. He know that is in a catch-up move. Wide receivers left and right. Instead, it gives the ball to Smith, turning the corner at the 20. Gets the first down. As they chase him out of bounds inside the 15. Clay Suarez. Clay Suarez making the tackle. So Zinter comes back in. Moore comes back in. Also back in the game is Anthony Harding. Harding will replace Smith. Hawaii trying to shore up the defense here. Ball is on the 13th first, and they can get a first down at the three. First and 10. This is Harding to the 10. Harding to about the eight, maybe the seven. Jacob Patek made the stop. So this drive has become relentless for Fresno State, and they've used they've used many personalities. It's a little unique uh, right here that had a running back set about a yard and a half off the field in the middle of the line of scrimmage trying to create a natural bubble to run through second down this is the tenth play of this drive looks like Brian Stater is audible at the line Brian Stater and we'll see we have a penalty fly we could have a false start on Fresno State. Before the ball was snapped, false start. Offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Bobby Lapore, the left tackle moving on that play, and that moves the ball back. You have to have to wonder if the crowd had something to do with that. Brent Stater's audible leaning at the line of scrimmage. Crowd's getting loud and noisy, trying to help the Warrior defense. False start. Good job, Kraut. Crowd yelling defense. Quick set. Ball is pitched to Smith. Smith in trouble. Down he goes. Third down. First man to him was Desmond Thomas. He was turned inside on a very short game on the play. That will bring up third down for Fresno State. Fresno State tried to come to the line with a quick count. Ended up with a very short, very short game. Probably trying to take the crowd out of it there, Jim, just going right up to the line of scrimmage and running the ball. Didn't work as far as yards game. Big third down play here. They will exchange position. They overload the right side as far as strength is concerned. The three receivers. Empty backfield. Brandstetter throws into the end zone. That's high. That's not good. Triple coverage. I believe he just threw that one away to preserve the right to get a field goal. You're down 31 to 7. And you're going to try for double figures with this field goal. The, the pass, that last pass, was uh, intended for Aji Rotutu. The wide receiver. Here's Clint Stitzer. 10 for 17 in field goals. His longest is 52. Ball is placed. Kick is down. It's up. It looks good. And it is good. So Fresno State gets on the board. It is now 31 to 10 in favor of Hawaii here in the second period.
But Jack Fact is sponsored by Jack in the Box. Try Jack's new sirloin steak and egg burrito. Only at Jack in the Box where breakfast is served all day. Well, as you can see there, there's only two teams in the country left that are undefeated. Hawaii at 8-0 and Kansas at 10-0. So what we did is we went back and we took a look at what's the longest streaks when you include one loss. And look at that right there. Hawaii is 18 and 1, second best in the country. That shows you they have strung two very good seasons together. What's the common denominator? Right there are June Jones and Colt Brennan. Malcolm Lane and Jason Rivers are deep for Hawaii. Stitzer will kick off. No, it's not him. No, yes, it is. It's a shot all the way one yard deep in the end zone. So Malcolm. Lane, Lane trying to turn the corner, turns up, leaps over a man, gets to the 23 yard line. It appeared as if somebody stepped in front of Stitzer, but Stitzer was the one who uh, kicked off. Marcus Riley finally made the stop on the special teams. There's a new home for local sports talk in the morning, AM 1500. The team with refreshing local personalities. Dan Patrick and the Sporting News Radio Network, AM 1500, the team. And Leahy and Leahy on Mondays and Fridays. That's right. That's right. Good fun. 426 left. Hawaii has the ball at their own 23-yard line. In motion is Hawthorne. Back to pass. And a sack. Well, that's the third sack in this first half. And it is Mike Cheese again. And we have a penalty flag down. Looks like a little extracurricular is going on down there between the offense and defensive line. Right now, Charles Tobert has his helmet off. I don't know if it was knocked off or he took it off. We'll see. After the ball was personal foul. Offense number 55. A penalty is half the distance. John Estes called for a penalty that he didn't need. Take a look at this sack because uh, here comes Cheese around the corner. Off the edge. Looks like maybe Kony Steinhoff didn't pick him up because he was sitting there looking at him as he made the tackle. 4-10 four, four left to play here. In the, um, I should say, uh, 4 12 left to play here in the first half. Must be hot in that bulldog mascot costume. First down, all the way back to the goal line. Running is Brennan. Fumbles the ball. Looks like and a Fresno penalty fly. Yeah, and uh, there's a penalty fly. He just bobbled it as he was cutting back, Jim, and it just got away from him. Not a good decision that time, and guess who recovered it again? Mike Cheese. There was no foul on the play. The ball was recovered by Fresno State. So Fresno State with a, a you talk about a great opportunity here. Brennan makes a wrong decision, and you can see that June Jones doesn't even talk to him as he walks by. On the flip side of the coin, now the Warrior defense can prove how good they are. There you see the bobble just gets away from them. Colt doesn't spend a lot of time practicing running with the ball. And it showed right there. So here comes Fresno State. They have new zest. They trail 31 to 10. But they have an opportunity to play catch up here. This is Miller angling off the right side, banging into the secondary and getting all the way to the 15 yard line, even inside the 15 yard line. Myron Newberry finally halted him. Well, this is key for the Bulldogs. If they can get in for a touchdown, they move this within the two scores, and that becomes a realistic possibility for them. Another field goal doesn't really help them that much. Ajira Tutu and Moore to the near side. Ball is pitched to Smith. He's going to pass. No, he's going to come back to the near side, trying to outrun the Hawaii defense. They grab him and they slam him. Amani Purcell and Brad Kalilimoku. It was a great play by Brad Kalilimoku. 
He keeps contained, holds on, makes a shoestring tackle, and if you watch him, he's on his back and pops up onto his feet. Just great athleticism all the way around. Third down, big third down play here for Fresno State. Well, you see the coverage in the end zone. That coverage was on uh, Shea Ajiro Tutu. Big play here. Three wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Empty backfield. Little confusion on the alignment for the Warriors. Fresno State calls a timeout. At the conclusion of the regular season, each of the Warriors seniors will be presented with a plaque from the University of Hawaii Federal Credit Union. UHFCU's Ariel Chung will make the presentation to honor each senior's commitment and success as a University of Hawaii student athlete. They come out with two wingbacks lined up behind the tackles and Miller the tailback third down and they have to go to the 11 for the first time the ball is on just inside the 18 here we go Miller Miller Close to the first down, but I don't know whether he made it. I think he may be short. Solomon Elamimian there to finally fold him up. And the that would be fourth is, down. The question is, do they kick it or go for it? I think they've got to go. They've got to go. This is a defining moment for the Warrior defensive line. They need to get penetration, stay low, move the line of scrimmage backwards. Fourth down, less than a yard. Brand Stater calling signals. Miller. Miller to the 10. I believe he has the first down. He has the forward progress. But the clock is running. 144 left in the half. Good clutch running that time by Lanya Miller out of Fontana, California. And good push by the Fresno offensive line. <laughs> That was just scrum football right there. Miller gained 113 yards last year in that game at Fresno. Clifton Smith, single setback. Double tight end. Smith. Smith to about the seven. They can... The ball, the line of scrimmage is outside the 10 yard line. I believe they can still get a first down. The yard markers are they're over there on the ground. Like it's a yeah, like it's goal to I go. I understand that. 
Well, it looks like uh, Pat Hill's decided to make sure there's no time left on the clock. And now they say goal to goal. Just eating the clock up, trying to get a touchdown here, not letting the Warriors get the ball back. So it is goal to goal. First down. Brad Stetter looks into the end zone. Touchdown. That was to Zinter. So Isaac Ginter of uh, Fresno State out of El Dorado Hills, California. That's his second touchdown of the year. And Fresno State, because of that turnover by Colt Brennan, they turned that fumble into a touchdown. And it is now 31 to 15. And that play was set up by the fact that they were running the ball effectively. And that's what makes play action pass so effective, Jim. Zimmerman for the extra point. It's 31 16, I believe. Ball is down. It's kicked. It's not good. That's not good. So the stadium scoreboard has 31 50. And our monitor is 31 16. We'll straighten it out. Time for the Price Busters fan cam. You can log on to K5, thehometeam.com, and click on the Price Busters fan cam icon to enter to win a $25 gift certificate to Price Busters. Say hello to the good guys. Fans enjoying this one. And uh, they had a long time getting into the parking lot, that's for sure. Excellent crowd watching this game tonight. And this game may just be developing, just be developing. 31-15, Hawaii leading. 41 seconds left to play in the first half. There's the kickoff by Zimmerman. It will go to Malcolm Lane. Lane out of the end zone. Lane pulled back, and down he goes. So the momentum here at the end of the first half is certainly resting with Fresno State. They have been successful. They have taken a Hawaii turnover, and they have turned it into a touchdown. Before that time, they were getting blitzed badly. 37 seconds and two timeouts for the Warriors, even on their own 14-yard line. They're dangerous. They are. We'll see what develops here. Rivers, Rice Mullins, and Best to the near side. Quick pass. That's complete to David Farmer. Farmer has the first down, gets out over the 25 to about the 27. Clock is stopped as they will uh, move the chains. Away will huddle very quickly. Will Harding was there to trip up Farmer. Here comes Hawaii again. Clock starts to run. Brennan throws. That's complete. Blockers in front of him. David Farmer. Farmer out over the 40. Farmer to the 42-yard line. And will Hawaii call a timeout here? 
They probably should have got two. They again move the chains. And I believe a timeout has been called. So Hawaii, even if they if they may not get the touchdown, but they certainly have the ability to get in the field goal range. There's Pat Hill. Pat Hill has been in a panic mode since midway through the first quarter. But he's the kind of coach that can still get things done. I mean, he's encouraging, he's fixing uniforms, he's telling his uh, players, you know, it's not over yet, it's only halftime. He's done an amazing job in the 11 years. He's been at Fresno, only two losing seasons in those 11 years. And that's playing against some of the biggest and best BCS conference teams in the country. He's a competitor. Yeah. So is Jim Jones. That's why these games are so much fun. First down, the ball is up the 43 yard line of Hawaii. And time is of the essence. Brennan throws over the middle. That is complete to Ryan Bryce Mullins. They will have to stop the clock. And move the change with seven seconds left. And Grace Mullins very slow in getting up. And we'll see if he took a hit to the head here. And you see, well, oh yeah. Boy, this is not good when your helmet hits with your arms being held back. There's nothing to break your fall. And that's what happened to Grace Mullins. This is not good. Marvin Haynes and Will Harding double teamed them. So they very gingerly take off the helmet and they're talking to him. Seven seconds left to play in the first half and concern here for one of the great players that has ever worn a University of Hawaii uniform, Ryan Bryce Mullins, the junior out of Rialto, California. And Grice Mullins with that reception and what a price he paid. He went over 1,000 yards in receptions. Yardage this season. What a play. Glad to see him walking off. Shaking his head like maybe a little bit of a possible mob concussion there, Jim. If we see, um, Dan Kelly would be a 59 or 60 yard field goal. I mean, that's astronomical distance. Well, if they're going to run a play, it has to be an out to the sideline because they're out. They're out of timeouts. Away, coming back to the huddle here, or or into the end zone. Hey, who's watching the game clock? First down on the 42-yard line of Fresno State. Brennan throw sideline pattern that's complete that one complete to Malcolm Wayne two seconds left just what the doctor ordered a nice nine yard out so here comes Dan Kelly and Dan Kelly is the kind of kicker I mean he could put it in the owns ozone it could have its own beeper he can kick it so far or he kind of uh, makes it stray every now and then but he's an exciting kicker this would be a 50 yarder and timeout has been called by Fresno State Fresno State by the way over the years of uh, their their coach Pat Hill they have blocked 74 kicks that's amazing that is it that is amazing you think about that Jim that's that's like seven a season <laughs> that is just amazing Thirty one to sixteen that score is correct by the way. The Warriors do not want a run back on a block kick. They don't want a block kick but mm -hmm. you definitely don't want to run back and they did that last week. They blocked the kick and ran it back against Utah State last week. Wind swirling around waiting for the snap is Grasso places it down at the 40. There's the kick. It has the distance. It is good. <laughs> what a great explanation point on the first half. 
34 to 15. Kelly works his magic. This is a KHNL News 8 update. Welcome. Welcome. This is a KHNL News 8 update. Welcome to our live local late-breaking halftime weekend review newscast. For the next 12 minutes, we'll take you back and show you some of the top stories featured this week on KHNL News 8 and K5, the home team. This week started with a much-needed drenching. While the rain helped, it came down so fast and furious, it also hurt. Here's midst of the storm coverage from Sunday. <laughs> Thunderstorms and heavy showers strike the state, leaving some parts underwater. And this nasty weather is not done yet. Severe weather is in the forecast. Those heavy rains drenched the northern half of the state last night and into today. Now the southern islands are seeing their share of the heavy showers. Well, Di, with unsettled weather near the island chain, we can all expect more rain tonight and into tomorrow. And like you mentioned, there have been sh heavy showers shifting to the southern end of the island chain. We want to go ahead and take a look at our Doppler radar, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And while southern islands now are being hit with the heavy showers, thunderstorms and heavy rain hit Oahu overnight. And by this morning, over a foot of rain had fallen on the windward side. KHNL News 8's Mary Sims live on Oahu's south shore with the latest from the flooding from the storm. Diane, all the rain left Kailua Beach Park looking a lot less like a park and a lot more like a lake. For nearby residents, it's a winter tradition they say they've had enough of. City and county crews pump water out of a flooded Kavailoa Road into Kailua Beach Park. Right now the problem was that it was actually a storm drain that was plugged on the park grounds over near the ocean. That um, facilitated everything backing up into this area. Several homes flooded. Others came within inches. I see the water line. See the water line. Here, here. It's a routine Kailua resident Robert Thurston says he's had enough of. If it was one small, like if we had the hundred year rains or something, you know, every ten years or something, I could understand that. But we, you know, every winter we have to look, we have to look for this. You know, we're looking like, are we going to flood? Are we going to flood? Every time it rains hard, you know, it's just scary. Over the years, Thurston has lost quite a bit to flood water. Washers, dryers, stoves, refrigerators. I have a couple of refrigerators, carpeting twice, oh God, maybe about 10, 15,000. The frustration is we have been trying to get the city to do, uh, help us with this problem of the flooding. For now, the city is taking proactive measures in case more rain comes. Because they say the drains won't be able to handle it. Try to um, mitigate some of the flow going back towards the houses coming from the park. The park is actually a, a natural low area. And although the rain causes havoc for some, others express thanks for much needed hydration.
And about an acre of Kailua Beach Park flooded this morning. Another 10 by homes nearby, their interiors were also damaged. Reporting live from Kuala Basin, Mary Sims, KHNL News 8. <laughs> And we want to go ahead and take you around the state with KHNL's newest feature, See It, Snap It, Send It, as viewers shared their view and shots of this stormy weather rolling in. We begin on the Big Island before the rains moved in. On Saturday evening, the high clouds overhead were lit up as the sun sat over Kailua Kona. The sky showed a warning red before the heavy rains hit. Overnight, Oahu had heavy showers, making for a foggy morning at this Makakilo Park. In addition to the rain coming down, the showers also brought down this minor rock slide near Waimea Bay. And those up early on Oahu's North Shore saw gray skies and showers to start off their day. All the rain added up to low-lying spots being flooded. You can see the impact of nearly six inches of rain had on the Honolulu Country Club, turning fairways into water hazards. And of course, the windward side of Oahu was hit the hardest by the thunderstorms and heavy rain, leaving part of Kailua Beach Park underwater. And you can share your photos and videos with our viewers. You can submit anything you like to snap at KHNL.com. And on Monday, the aftermath of the storm with cleanup of homes, beaches, and bridges. The rain has left streams like this one swollen. Not too bad here, but at Waikane Stream Bridge, crews say flooding is a chronic problem. It's deja vu. The rash of rainfall has left the Waikane Stream Bridge clogged with rubbish once again. Every year there's a problem here. Every time there's a little bit of rain, this road, road floods. And with more rain expected, <laughs> crews had to race against Mother Nature to prevent more flooding. Kamehameha Highway is the only way around the island, so we want to ensure that this crossing remains intact. The bridge work trickled into the afternoon rush hour leaving commuters with a traffic nightmare. I've been backed up since Kaneohe. I've been sitting here since 4.15. At least an hour and a half. Yeah. At least and just go by, what, a few miles every five minutes or something. Bad. Should be better. They live out here too late, though, yeah? While nearby homes weren't quite flooded out, the Department of Transportation says clearing the debris was necessary. We decided to take care of it now. Uh, apologize to the drivers for the inconvenience, but uh, uh, we're going to have a bigger inconvenience if the bridge washes out. This kind of thing has been going on for years, and it's time they need to fix it. A fix the Department of Transportation says isn't easy. Part of the problem is that a lot of the trees along Waikane Stream are on private property, and when landowners don't maintain the trees, a lot of the logs and the branches fall into the water and get trapped underneath the bridge, so the state ends up having to clean up the debris. Reporting live from Kalihi, Mariela David, KHNL News 8. College basketball resumed Friday with the kickoff of the UH Warriors hoop season. On Tuesday, Stephen Florino of the KHNL K5 sports team previewed a double dose of Nash. A new season starts a new era for the Rainbow Warrior basketball team. Bob Nash says the transition from assistant coach to head coach has been a smooth one. Just like the transition he makes every day between father and coach. Our Stephen Florino has that story. On the court, their coach and player. Off it, their father and son. Rainbow Warrior head coach Bob Nash and his son Bobby. Um, well, it's good. Um, it's, it's fun, but sometimes it can be challenging. But you know, for the most part, we have a good on the court, off the court relationship. That's because both of them say they've been able to separate the two. When he's in here in, in the basketball, you know, if he makes a mistake, I'm on him just like I would be on anybody else. Oh, I'd say he's definitely tougher on Bobby. You know, he's definitely tougher. You know, he expects the most out of, out of his son, especially. Nah, he treats me like everybody else. I'm just one of the guys when I'm on court, but when I'm at home, you know. The sun. And that means getting on him for things other than not hustling and blocking out and silly fouls. When he's at home, you know, it's a whole different story. If he's not taking out the garbage, he's not washing his dishes, you know, I'm on him at that stage too. We have a very good relationship and I just, I thank him for it because, you know, he's very good at it. All Nash wants is for his son to succeed, just like the rest of his players. I think if they continue to, to develop, uh, you know, each day, each month, each year, uh, when they're done playing here, they're all going to be great player for us. Spoken like a true father. Stephen Florino, KHNL News 8. Wednesday brought tragedy to the island of Oahu. Live, local, late breaking, KHNL News 8.
Our top story tonight, two Oahu fires within minutes of one another leaves one person dead. On the windward side in Kailua, firefighters race to put out the flames at home while those who live inside struggle to get out. And back in town, firefighters called to a home in Salt Lake. Chop right overhead as the flames tear through the home. After knocking those flames down, firefighters make a very grim discovery. A little boy trapped inside in a bedroom couldn't get out in time. His heartbroken family stood outside the home and watched as firefighters battled the flames. KHNL News 8's Mariella David was at the scene as well and has more on today's tragedy. From above, Chopper 8 catches a cloud of smoke billowing above a Salt Lake neighborhood. On the ground, a family shaken, many of them children, after flames destroy their two-story home and heartbroken to learn one of the kids is gone. We cry for uh, babies. How many kids? Plenty kids. Darcy Caesar lived at the Likini Street home. She says her family just recently moved from Micronesia to Hawaii. Firefighters say about a dozen kids lived here, 21 people total. 18 of them were inside when the fire broke out. All except for one little boy escaped. There's like um, guys running up and down the road telling everyone that there's still a little kid in there. Unfortunately, we uh, did recover uh, a body, I mean, a, a victim uh, who has passed. Body has not been identified at this time, but we are missing a, a five-year-old child at this time. Investigators cannot confirm if the five-year-old victim is the missing boy. They say the body is burned beyond recognition. It's pretty serious inside the house, often get up to 1,500 degrees, so it's, gonna, it's a pretty grave situation. As the bus picks up the family to take them to shelter. We notified the American Red Cross they are on scene already. They have counselors on scene. Loved ones leave without a home home and without one of their own. In Salt Lake, Mariela David, KHNL News 8. Firefighters say the house is a total loss. They're not sure what caused the fire, and investigators aren't sure if there were smoke alarms in the home. And to Windward Oahu now, where firefighters were also busy this afternoon battling a house fire in Kailua. It was reported shortly before 3 o'clock on Wanaao Road. Officials say no one was home when the fire started. A neighboring home also suffered some damage. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Our series of reports, KHNL News 8 Safety Alert, continue to highlight those things you can do to keep yourself and your family safe. On Thursday, KHNL News 8's Marvin Point Conzejo brought parents tips on one of the most important things you can do to ensure your child's safety. For generations, parents have taught their children don't talk to strangers. But it turns out that's not even the first step. Yeah, first of all, parents need to speak to the kids before the bad person speaks to them. While it is a common fear that a child could be snatched away in broad daylight, that scenario is actually uncommon. It's more likely a stranger will gently lure a child away and then calmly take the victim with them. Make them aware that strangers will use different gimmicks to entice them to, to come close to them. Uh, they'll bring a puppy, they offer candy, you know, the bottom line on it is no matter how attractive the enticement may be, you teach your child not to go anywhere, don't approach strangers. But children are children, still developing and learning. Captain Frank Fujii says be sure to also teach them to be prepared to fight back as best they can if they're being abducted. If somebody tries to grab them, it's all right to kick, scream, punch, yell to get away. You know, anything they need to do to get away. And if you're going to teach them to yell, you, by all means, teach them to yell intelligently. You know, they need to say, let me go, you're not my father, let me go, you're not my mother. That way, anybody who's walking by will know that, hey, something's wrong here. Finally, Fujii says, be mindful, but above all, trust your children. If you've taught them well, they'll do the right thing. Hey, they're our responsibility, and we need to work with them to, to keep them safe and how to help teach them to keep themselves safe. Marvin Boykin, Sale, KHNL News 8. And you can catch safety alert reports both on KHNL News 8 and on K5, the home team. This is our final halftime week in review for the season. We hope you'll tune in for Hawaii's live local late breaking news weekdays from 5 to 7 a.m. and at 5, 6, 9 and 10 p.m.
Welcome back, everyone, to Aloha Stadium. The game summary is sponsored by Burger King. Have it your way. There you see Hawaii dominating in first downs and even in rushing yards, passing yards, and total offense. And points off turnovers. That was the fumble by Colt Brennan. Fresno State turning that into a touchdown. They did not make the extra point. And in time of possession, which really shows you that Fresno State has had the ball almost five minutes at, uh, in front of Hawaii. But the way they run, they're eating up an awful lot of time if they're in the catch-up mode. And for the highlights, there's quite a few in the first half. First, the Fresno highlights, they're in it because of these three plays. Number 28, A.J. Jefferson, bringing it to the house. Nice little block there on Dan to go all the way. Next play, Cole Brennan trying to make something happen. He scrambles, he's running upfield. Ball gets away from him. Fresno recovers. And then this play action pass, Fresno's moving the ball. Tom Brand Stater throws it to Isaac Kinter. Touchdown. Hawaii offense. TD. Jason Rivers beats the defensive coverage deep. Coming back, we have Leon Wright Jackson up the middle, showing his great running prowess. Touchdown. And then coming back with Devon Best, number seven in the end zone. Great catch holding on to him after the hit. And there's defensive highlights too. Brad Taylor Moko off the corner, sack. Blaze Suarez staying with it. Playing injured, coming in, boom. Brand Stater on the ground. And number 43, Brad Taylor Moku coming back on Clifton Smith, keeping contained, holding on, making the tackle. Tonight's halftime adjustments, and this game will be decided on adjustments. Is sponsored by Cairo Plan Hawaii. Well, for Fresno, they have to pressure the quarterback. They need to twist, stun, blitz, do whatever they need to. But they need to get pressure on Brennan. For Hawaii, not much. Just keep on moving the ball, getting down there and scoring like they have been doing. When we come back, we'll have the second half for you between Hawaii and Fresno State. Hawaii up 34-16. exclusive sports presentation of the This exclusive sports presentation of the home team is sponsored in part by Kaiser Permanente, Thrive, and by American Savings Bank, with longer hours in more locations than any other bank in Hawaii. Let's find out what's on tap, sponsored by Heineken. I turn to Jim to find out what to look for in the second half. Well, for Fresno, they've got to close the gap. They're down 34-16. 
They need three touchdowns to get back into this game. They need to do it right now after they receive the ball. And for Hawaii, deep ball. Stretch that defense. Other than the touchdown by Jason Rivers at the beginning, they need to stretch out and get a deep ball touchdown. If you are a team that's behind, and Fresno State is behind now, 34 to 16, what you need to do is get your hands on the ball. This will be a very important possession for Fresno State. They definitely need to move it down the field, Jim. There's the kickoff to Jefferson. Takes it on the three, and here he comes. Jefferson trying to get to the outside, and Hoy pushes him into the boundary. And down he goes out around the 25-yard line. Ryan Keomaka on the special teams for Hawaii. So now Fresno State knows that if they can score, if they can score quickly, they're right back in this game. For the Warriors, they need to take all hope away from the Bulldogs, shut them down right here, and make them punt. Lanya Miller in the backfield. Along with uh, Brand Stater. Goes to Miller. Miller probing. Gets out over the 30 to about the 31 yard line. Line of scrimmage being the 25. Adam Purcell and Adam Leonard double teamed him there. Second down and five. Clifton Smith comes in and running back replacing Lanya Miller. 56 yards on 12 rushes in this game. Just underway in the second half. A lot of shifting going on. Anthony Harding in the slot. Three wide receivers. Quick pass. That's complete to Moore. Moore to the 35. Moore to the 39. Marlon Moore. Moore out of Sacramento, California. That's his 27th reception of the season. A ball, a ball control type of pass right here. Out to Moore. Getting a lead block. Trying to get eight, ten yards a crack. Running north, south. Short passes. That's what I expect him to start the game with, Jim. First down for Fresno State. The motion is Kinter. Ball is given a big hole to Clifton Smith. Smith still on his feet. Smith may score. Smith finally is chipped up as he gets inside the 30. That possibility loomed because he was looking for the high stepping run to the end zone. 32 yards right up the middle. Right here, you see him cut back. Adam Leonard's left out there on the island, has to keep contained. Smith just darted right inside him. Another look at this. Grand Slater out of the lane. First down. Ball is given to Miller. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Keeps his feet going. And it's finally. No, oh, now he fumbles the ball. Hawaii may have it. The ball tumbling, tumbling. Hawaii does have it. And with it is Newberry. And Newberry still on his feet. Newberry is tipped up back at the 16 yard line. But a great job by Myron Newberry stopping himself, picking up the ball and turning away from the sideline. So that ball would not go out of bounds and stay with Fresno. Adam Leonard ripped the ball away. Take another look at this extraordinary play. There you see Miller and then Leonard ripping the ball away. The ball comes out. It tumbles toward the sidelines. And then Newberry will show up, grab the ball, and then run back toward the center of the field. Hawaii will have it first down at the 17-yard line. What a turnaround. Leon White Jackson back with Colt Brennan. Brennan with time now throws. That is complete. With it at the 23 and then getting to about the 24 yard line. We'll see where they put it. That's Ryan Bryce Mullen. So Bryce Mullins with his sixth reception of the game. And he's gone over a thousand yards this season. Bremen, 315 yards now, 21 of 27, and two touchdowns. 
One to Jason Robertson, one to Devon Bess. Second down, and about three and a half. With it is Brennan. And Brennan is just gobbled up at the line of scrimmage. That ball, I mean, that play never materialized. And Brennan really holding on to that ball for dear life. Wanted to run the option. That's that weak side option away from the three, re three receiver side. Normally, UH will run it into their bench. This is the first time I recall them running it to the opponent bench, and it didn't work. Big third down play coming up. 12 10 left to play in the third period. There you see John Manga. Manga has been steady as far as a defender for Fresno State over the course of this season. Brennan, here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Brennan throws over the middle. That's incomplete. It was intended for Malcolm Lane. That will bring a fourth down, and Hawaii will have to punt it away. As you were saying, Jim, the Bulldogs come with a zone blitz, something that the Warriors do so effectively. They came on the Warriors' left side, bring four people on three blockers. Brennan was able to get it off, just wasn't accurate. Tim Grasso will punt. This will be his 22nd punt. 40.1 yard average 51 has been as long as and he's been able to place the ball inside the 27 times but he's going to have to root it here the line of scrimmage being the 22. Zero. Here comes the attempted block they don't get it ball comes up fair catch call and it is taken at the 43 yard line. Excellent field position for Fresno State. 36 yard punt and no return. Thirty four to sixteen Hawaii eleven forty nine left to play in the third most people try to quit smoking many times before they really do it make this the time you quit for good by calling Hawaii tobacco quit line at one eight hundred quit now to get the free confidential support that you need. There's Brand Stater. Brand Stater five for seven and passing 80 yards and one touchdown ball is given to Smith. And Clifton Smith explodes into the secondary, but then stumbles. And we they give him forward progress. The line of scrimmage being the 43 of Fresno State, only to the 46, second down and seven. Well, it's a good thing he stumbled there, Jim, because there was a hole developing. Ball is kept by Rand Stater. He has time. He throws. That is incomplete. The ball comes out from the intended receiver. And that's Jason Crawley. You see Branstetter just shaking his head right there. That was a very effective play action pass. It kept all the linebackers in because when you run the ball effectively, the front seven has to respect the run. Right in his hands. Third down and seven for Fresno State. Big play, and the crowd knows it.
that come out in the Hawaii offense, the four wides. Right Stateler. Back, looks, throws. He's hit as he throws. And it is incomplete. David Vicuri put the pressure on him. That will bring a fourth down. It was intended for Jamal Hamler. You see Vicuni breaking free from his block and just smashing Brandstead right in the mouth. So Kyle Zimmerman will punt it to Devon Bess. Vicuni leads the Warriors in sacks. He just has a motor to the QB. There's the punt. Excellent punt. Coming up, no fair catch. Takes it on the 26-yard line. Gets to the 30. Gets to the 35, to the 40. Thirty-three yard punt, twenty yard return by Bess when we come back. Away will try to pour it on. The UH athlete, uh, the, I'll start over. The UH athletic scholar spotlight for this week is on Carolina Perez Castro of the Wahine golf team. The scholar spotlight is presented by AIG Hawaii. Discover the AIG advantage. It will be first down for Hawaii at their own 40, following uh, the punt return by Devon Bess. Hawaii comes out with triple wide receivers to the left. Bremen being pressured now throws over the middle that is too high threw it into double coverage tried to force it in to Ryan Bryce Mullins on a crossing putter and Malcolm Lane was actually beating his coverage deep down the right hand side but I don't think Colt had made it that far in his progression second down and 10 for Hawaii Ball at their own 40-yard line. Clock stopped with 10.55 left to play in the third. Malcolm Lane is split to the right. Jason Rivers to the left. Bass and Bryce Mullins in the slot. Bremen looking, has time, throws. That is complete to Bess, and it was not thrown well. That was not thrown well because Bess had to come back for it. So Brennan is having a, a rough patch here. His passes are not accurate. And one of his great attributes, his ability to throw accurate passes. Nice job by Moses Harris there on the line of scrimmage coming up and not letting Devon Best get any kind of positive yardage. So it is third down and 10 from the 40 yard line. White trying to convert long yardage here. And we have a I false start. I think Tony. Before the ball was snapped, false start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Very saw fair. Saw fair from Pongo Pongo American Samoa. There you see him. Actually, they both moved. They both moved. Yeah, they both moved. 
Steinhoff and Salafair. So it is third and 15. This is a huge task here to convert. Fresno State rushes four. That's all. Brennan with time. Chase out of the pocket, comes to the near side. Now he throws. That is complete. And that's a first down to Ryan Grice Mullen. He waited for Grice Mullins to ripen on that pattern. Grice Mullins knew that Brennan had been chased out of the pocket and he adjusted. 18 yard gain and a first down. Outstanding job by the Warrior offensive line. The um, Bulldogs are running a blitz. And Ryan Grice Mullins sat down in the zone right between two defenders. And they actually waited for the ball to get there. Daniel Libre is in the backfield. Quick pass. This is complete to Bess with a blocker. Bess is tackled. Stumbles toward the sidelines. Short gain on the play. Maybe three, maybe four. So Hawaii using the pass, using the clock, keeping that Fresno State offense and the Fresno State possibility of catching up in this game, keeping it in the refrigerator, so to speak. Here comes Hawaii again, gain on the play of four, second down and six. They have advanced the ball to the 43-yard line of Fresno State. Colt Brennan waiting for the snap. In motion is best. Brennan with 337 yards in passing. He had 409 last year. Quick pass, that's complete to Malcolm Lane. And Lane gets roughed up a bit. And they finally force him back, but we'll have a penalty, and it could be offside. I believe so, Jim. Tyler Klutz looked like he jumped across the line of scrimmage there. That was a free play for the Warriors. See if the offside uh, defense number 11. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Tyler Klutz, a little too anxious that time. He's out of Clovis, California, 6'2", 245-pound senior. So Hawaii has now advanced the ball just outside the 35-yard line of Fresno State. Jason Rivers flanked to the far side. Inside of Rivers is Bryce Mullins and then Bess. Libre in the backfield. It's Libre. Finds a hole. Gets to the 31. And the scrum forms there. Ball comes out. Picked up by a Hawaii player, but after the whistle. An effective push there by the Warrior offensive line at the end of that scrum, as you mentioned, Jim. There you see, and then he really draws a crowd here. Just that explanation point to knock everybody over there. I don't know why he was hugging Marvin Haynes. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, you know, good play or I'm coming again. You better be ready for me. Leon Wright Jackson has replaced Libro. Second down and five. The ball just outside the 30 now. Showing blitz. And the ball is given him a sweep. And the with it is Leon Wright Jackson. All the way. Inside the 10-yard line. Tyler Klutz may have saved the touchdown, a 23-yard gain. And Hawaii doing it on the you ground. Tell, you can tell that Coach Jones really has done his homework. There's a blitz over there on the Warrior left side. There goes Leon Wright Jackson over to the right side. Nobody's home. That's that's effective scouting by watching video by June Jones, knowing down in distance what the Bulldogs are gonna do. Right, Jackson now three carries, 54 yards, and one touchdown, a 33-yard scamper early in the game. First down, and goal to go. Looking ends off. Brennan throws. That is, let's see, could be caught, could be intercepted. And it is. Second turnover by Brennan. Marcus Riley coming up with the interception. That's only the second interception all season for the defensive backfield of uh, Fresno State. So the touchback will pull the 
ball back out to the 20-yard line. Fresno State will have new life. To add insult to injury, Jim, there was a holding call on the play, which of course was declined by Fresno. So Fresno has new opportunities here with 6.51 left to play in the third period, and the Hawaii defense called on again. That's the second turnover in this game for Brennan. He fumbled the ball, and now he's been intercepted. And for Brennan, that's his 12th interception of the year. Brandstetter on the pitch to the near side comes Smith. And they twirl him out of bounds as he gets close to the 25-yard line. Carl Noah we'll was go, there. We'll go back and take a look at that interception. Bryce Mullins coming across the middle. Marcus Riley, great extension to collect that ball in for the touchback. Riley, that was a um, very artistic interception. In on the play, three and a half. Second down for Fresno State. The motion is Smith. Brandstadter throws. And that is incomplete. Solomon Elabimian got in the passing lane that time. Bear Pascal was looking around to see if there was going to be a flag thrown, but I think that was just a, a natural hookup when you have a tight end and he's blocking on all those running plays, and then all of a sudden you're going to go to a passing play. It's very difficult for a linebacker to be able to tell the difference. That's why the flag wasn't thrown. Third down, long yardage for Fresno State. Ajiro Tutu is flanked to the far side. Double wide receiver to the near side. Van Stater out of the shotgun. Crowd really into it. Timeout has been called by Fresno State. Fresno State. Fresno State first charge timeout. This will also be a media. Media timeout. Nakoa football is the official booster club of the University of Hawaii Warriors. For more information on the Nakoa football club, call 956-4513. Big play here, third down. Wow, look at that right there. Only 30% of the time have the opponents made the third down on the Warrior defense. Much improved over the last few years. Brian Stater. Ryan Stater fakes the handoff, back to pass, throws, that is complete for the first down. And that was complete to Shea Ajiro Tutu. 6'3", sophomore out of El Dorado Hills, California. 19-yard pickup. Great conversion that time by Fresno State. Solomon Elmimian coming in there, almost getting to Brand Stater, but he's able to get the ball off. Big third down conversion for the Bulldogs right there. Adiro Tutu caught that ball in. I mean, it was in real big, wide open territory. 
And we have uh, whistles blow because offside defense number 93. Five Watson. yard penalty remains first down. On that particular play, Clifton Smith, and he's done this a couple of times uh, in this game, he gets over the center. And so that takes uh, the quarterback, Brandstater, away. They'll snap it to, I believe, Smith. Here he comes. Smith hit at the line and forced back. Excellent defense by Hawaii. On that first and five play from the 48-yard line. Solomon Illuminian again. They'll give him forward progress to midfield. You know, this team, that in this whole second half so far, it's been all defense. Really, the defense stepping up, making a play, making something happen. We'll see if it happens for the Warriors right here. Second down. Fumble. Picked up by Brand Stater. Who run for the first down and more, all the way to the 41. and finally tracked him down. That's another first down for Fresno State. They'll move the chain. A, comple a completely broken play right there as the ball hits the ground on Brandstater. He's actually underneath center, just a bad quarterback center exchange. Heads up, grabs the ball, and just scoots. So the ball on the, the Hawaii 41-yard line. First and 10 for Fresno State. Trying to get back in this game. They trail 34 to 16. Ball is given to Harding, I believe. And Anthony Harding. And Harding, one of the many who have carried the load for Fresno State. Excellent run right up the middle. You know, Jim, from what we've observed all season long, this is the most effective running back core that we've seen. They do a very good job of finding the hole, squirting through it, getting positive yardage north south. Second down, short yardage. Second down and two. Brian Stater engineering another drive. And with it is Miller. Miller has enough of the first down. And he has advanced the ball to the Hawaii 30 yard line. La Ele there to make the tackle out of Honolulu and St. Louis School. So Pat Hill knows that if he can keep this going, if he can use the clock, keep the Hawaii offense off the field watching, Fresno State can get back and be there to challenge at the end. The motion is Kinter. Brad Stater, the ball comes out. Is that a fumble or is that an incomplete pass? They say no, incomplete pass. Good call. Well, it looked like it was John Fanodi, Jim, coming in there to get on top of the back of Brad Stater. Or was it? It was John Fanodi. Boy, was that a fumble or was that? They call it an incomplete pass. I thought it was a good call. And John Fanodi. Excellent pressure. Also in on the play right there with him was Amani Purcell coming from the other side. They show the replay and Brown wants Hawaii to have the ball. You see June on the sideline over there not too happy about the call. Ball is given to Smith. He's hammered at the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third down and ten. That was an outstanding job by Adam Leonard. Who's actually on the backside of the play, rode his man down the line of scrimmage, allowing himself to be in position for the cutback and to make that tackle. You be the referee here. You be the referee on this play. Was his arm coming forward when he was hit by Fono T? Nope. Yes, I believe it was. Yeah. Well, the ball goes forward, Jim, so actually, I yeah. think you're right. I'll change my mind. Third down and ten. Big play here. Kinter in motion again. Brandstetter here comes the blitz. They hit him. Fred Kalili Moku off the edge. Showing a great burst of speed. 
who was not going to be denied. Coming him down. And Brad Stater didn't know he was there until the last possible moment. Kyle Zimmerman into punt. And deep is best. Hawaii is seventh in the nation in sacks, and they've had three tonight. Waiting for the snap. Zimmerman. And I believe it was delay of game. Probably on purpose. They like delay. to do that. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. They being punters, because when they're so close, not only does it mess with their per punt average, it is difficult to stop the ball when you're within a certain distance from going into the end zone. So that extra five yards actually helps the punter. Zimmerman packed up five yards. See if he can hang it. There's the snap and the kick. Excellent spiral. Will it reach the end zone? It will. Away will play. The first down at the 20 yard line, 44 yard punt, and no return. And you're right, you're right, Jim. It's been, it's been a defensive show here so far in the second half. As you said earlier, Jim, between these two coaches, it's a chess match all the way through. You can see they went into halftime. They made adjustments on both sides of defense. It's stymieing both offenses right now. Let's see, June Jones, offensive specialist. Extraordinaire. Let's see what the Warriors can put on right here on this drive. First down at the 20. Leon Wright Jackson with Brennan in motion is Grice Mullins. 206 left to play in the third period. Brennan hands it to Leon Grice. Rather, Leon Wright Jackson. And then Wright Jackson over the 20 to the 26 yard line. Good neighbor pharmacy reminds you to be well and well informed. Visit mygnp.com for one of the 22 good neighbor pharmacists across the state. Good gain on the play, second down, and about three and a half. Ball just over the 26 yard line. David Farmer now in the backfield. Brennan with time, with time, throws. That's complete to Bess. Bess trying to get to the 35 yard line. He already had the first down. But they finally corral him and down he goes. So for Guess, that is his ninth catch of this game. And he's closing in on 100 yards. Nice job of Colt Brinton working through all three of his progressions there to come back all the way to his far side to pick up Devon Bess. The Bulldogs have been exclusively in nickel coverage, five defensive backs since the start of this second half. And it's been effective for them so far. First down from the 33 yard line. Ball is given to Farmer. Trying to turn the corner. He does at the 35. He's at the 40. Has the first down. So Farmer covering or carrying for Hawaii. 14, 14 yard game. That's one of the weaknesses of the nickelback coverage. If the receivers run off the defensive backs, it allows a running back, if he can get past the front seven, front six, excuse me, he can get some nice yardage. And big man David Farmer getting a first down. Tell you one thing about rushing tonight. Everybody thinks that Fresno State has rushed well. 36 plays and 140 yards. Hawaii, 16 plays, 141 yards. Wow. First down. Brennan back to pass, steps up, throws. That is complete. It's complete to Ryan Grace Mullins down the sidelines and out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. Damon Jenkins was chasing him, and Hawaii threatens again. 41 yard reception for Grace Mullins. Well, that's what we talked about coming into the second half. What to expect? The Warriors to stretch the defense vertically, and they did it right there. Cole Brennan to Ryan Grice Mullins. Grice Mullins coming off 13 catches, 195 yards against New Mexico State. 
And Bryce Mullins now has eight catches for 121 yards. And Bremen is back on target. White Jackson is back there with him. Four wides. The motion is best. Bremen gives it to White Jackson. Cutting the corner at the 10. And out of bounds at the seven yard line. You hear the crowd roar for Colt Brennan coming up and laying a block. Trying to, to spring Leon Wright Jackson for the touchdown. Final seconds of the third quarter. Damian Owens and Moses Harris made the double team tackle for Fresno State. We watch Colt Brennan right here lay a block. Final seconds of the third period. Hawaii will end the third period. Leading 34 to 15, that was the score at halftime. Fourth quarter coming up. So sweet, you won't even know it's sugar free. So sweet, you won't even know it's sugar free. Click on BigIslandCandies.com to order the new sugar free chocolate Hawaiian macadamia nut brownies. Here we look at the BCS rankings, the stats. Hawaii right here at number 16 in the country. Four teams in front of them losing. Michigan, Connecticut are the big ones. Does that should allow Hawaii to jump up and move towards that magic number 12 or above position? Hawaii here, second down. The ball at the seven-yard line of Fresno State. Brennan trying to quiet the crowd as we begin the fourth quarter. Wright Jackson to the line of scrimmage. That's all. You know, Jim, I was looking through the stats for all the previous Warrior games so far this season. And this last quarter, the third quarter, is the first time that the Warrior first-team offense has been held scoreless all year long. And Jacobs there to make uh, the tackle. Yeah, that's right. There was two other quarters where they had zero points, but both of those were the second team offense in blowouts. So Malcolm, defensive quarter, big time. David Farmer back with Brennan. Brennan on this pattern will be looking into the end zone. Looking, looking. Now throws. 
throws high. Throws real wide at the attended receiver, Jason Rivers. And that'll bring a fourth down. Well, you can get a first down at the two, but I don't think they'll fool around with that. Holding oh, wait a minute. offense, no, offense. number 62. Ten yard. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Actually, I think that's a smart call by Pat Hill. You don't want to let this Warrior offense even have one more shot at the end zone. Running and passing now is 27 to 37, 393 yards. And the one, rather, two touchdowns and one interception. So here comes Dan Kelly. Kelly the blaster. This will be a 25 yarder out of the hold of Grasso. 24 officially. It's down, it's kicked. And it is perfect. So Hawaii well, now leads 34 to 16. 30 or a 37 to 16. A scoreboard's driving me crazy. There's a new home for local sports talk in the morning. I am 1500, the team of refreshing local personalities like Russell Yamanoha and Patrick in the afternoon and the Sporting News Network. I am 1500, the team. So let's see, Monday and Fridays is you and Kanoa in the morning. Bob. And, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays is Russell and Bob. And, and Bob Hope. And Bob Hope. And then and uh, Wednesdays is uh, Jeff Portnoy. Yeah. So that's over. a hell of a lineup when, you, when yeah. you think about it. I mean, the experience that all of you guys have across the board there. Do you enjoy doing it, Jim? Oh, yeah. Good fun. It's good fun. Kelly now 9 for 12 on the season. He has three field goals in this game. 25 yards, 50 yards, and 24 yards. A.J. Jefferson, he can shorten things up in a hurry. He already has a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Adjusting the ball is uh, Kelly. Just into the fourth quarter. Oh, wait, you're having trouble in the second half in the red zone. Unable to get the touchdown. They settle for the field goal. Here's the kickoff. Line drive down the middle. Coming up and taking it on the bounce is Jefferson. This could be trouble. Jefferson is hit. Boy, is he hit and thrown down. And we have a penalty flag. Jefferson ran in to John Fonotti. Fonotti just dropped him. John is just jacked up. During the return, illegal block in the back. The receiving team, number 44. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Frank Padilla for the Bulldogs blocking the back. Watch this hit. Boom. That is perfect. That is clinical. John Fonoti. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of him. Crowd has been vociferous tonight, to say the least. He's 
save John from OT on the sideline. First down for Fresno State at their own 15 yard line. Pinter in motion. Brandstetter lays it off. This is to Smith up the sideline. Smith gets the first down as he is lifted out of bounds. Myra Newberry is there to make the stop for Hawaii. Now, the Fresno State, Jim, now cannot wait. I mean, they can't put together long lasting drives. Absolutely, absolutely. If there's any, you know, they've got 14 minutes left. There's three scores behind. I was going to say, if there's anything good that came out of that field goal, was they needed three scores to get ahead. Now they still only need three scores to tie the game. The reason I was confused with 15 and 16, the scoreboard has a light bulb by it. It's driving me nuts. We'll get to it by next year, I'm sure. <laughs> And timeout called. Timeout has been called by Fresno State. That's their second timeout here in the second half. More to come from Aloha Stadium. This look at the passing game is sponsored by Aloha Air Lines, a proud supporter of UH Sports. For reservations and fare specials, visit alohaairlines.com. First down for Fresno State here in the fourth quarter. And they trail Hawaii. There you see the passing through the air. Hawaii, 393 yards. Fresno State, 99. Brad Stater with time throws. Quick pattern, and that is complete to Tim Lang. And Lang almost broke that very quick 20 yard gain. And that's what Fresno State has to do. They've got to chew up the yardage of that caliber. And do it quickly, just like you were mentioning, Jim. See Desmond Thomas making the catch. Ball out to the 44 yard line for Fresno State. Lang remains in the game. He is flanked to the left. Ajiro Tutu. Is to the right. Fresno State going to the air. Three man pattern. Long. A dual two two. And that ball is, let's see. Jared Lewis well, that's carrying on the play. I'll tell you what, that was over the back on the offensive player and possibly face guarding on the defensive player. That could go either way. Pass interference. Defense number 23. Big call, big call up the near sideline. You watch this right here. You've got, you've got a little bit of face guarding. You've got over the top. Boy, that's just tough to call it either way. That was just close all the way, John. Crowd certainly doesn't like it. No, not at all. Ball is now on the 41-yard line of Hawaii. Here comes Fresno State again. Ball is given to Smith, Clifton Smith. And Smith knifes inside the 40 to the 35 yard line. 
Fresno State trying to turn up the heat here. Hawaiian Telecom super fast high speed internet is still the best value in town. $19.99 a month for the first year. Call 643 0805 or visit HawaiianTel.com. You see another look at the second down and three. Miller is in the backfield. It is Miller. Miller runs into a stone wall, keeps his legs going, and is very close to the first down. So it will be a good measure. All along is uh, the defensive coordinator uh, for Hawaii, Greg McMacken. And he has been running up and down the sidelines. Rich Miano has been sig signaling in uh, formations for Hawaii defensively. And on the other side of the field, there's Pat Hill. We've got to be impressed with what Greg McMacken's done with uh, Warrior defense this year. Uh, it just continues to get better and better. They were ranked number 37 in the nation coming into this game, yards per game at 339. That's the previously last year they were 93. In 2005 they were 102. And in 2004 they were 116. So you can see Coach McMacken has made tremendous progress in making this defense stout and giving it the ability to stop both the run and the pass, Jim. First down on the 31 yard line for Fresno State. They have been able to move the ball. They trail 37 to 16. Brown Stater fakes the handoff, looks over the middle with time. Now throws. That is complete at the 20, at the 10, at the 5. And it is a touchdown for Ajiro Tutu. Or is it uh, Marlon Moore? It's Moore. Marlon Moore down the sidelines. I don't know if we'll be able to see it on the replay, but Gerard Lewis actually fell down right there. And he was supposed to be the person coming back across to make the tackle and here comes Fresno State it's 37 to 22 Marlon Moore getting in to the end zone for Marlon Moore that's his second touchdown or is it let me see we have to check here on Moore that's for Fresno State they're saying yeah that's his second touchdown the extra point is up and it is good it's now 37 to 22 Hawaii and this game has turned interesting very interesting now they change it to 23 37 23 Fresno State scoring drive you see it there Brad Stater will fly across the Pacific tonight and he will be sore tomorrow. Yep. 31 yard touchdown pass from Brad Stater to Moore. Well, what the Warriors need to do is they need to get this ball, move it down the field, get a touchdown. Keep it a three touchdown difference between the Warriors and Fresno State. Of course, the Bulldogs need to stop them and get the ball back. And we'll see what kind of kickoff develops here. Remember, Fresno State is in a catch-up mode. There's the kick, and they will kick it deep. And they will kick it to Malcolm Lane in the corner at the three-yard line. Lane, following his blocking, gets out over the 20 to the 21. So now Hawaii has to go to work. They are being challenged. The tackle made by Frank Padilla. I'm thinking there may be something wrong with Brennan. Maybe he was, um, you know, when he was sacked a couple of times. But he just, here in the second half, he has not really thrown the ball with his usual, uh, usual accuracy. Now, we have seen this uh, over the course of the season during the game, but he snaps out of it. And then is his brilliant self again. We'll see. Quick pass. That's incomplete. That was intended for Malcolm Lane. 
You slowly sense that the momentum is really shifting to the Bulldogs. The Warriors need to get a couple first downs right here to avoid that from happening completely. So Hawaii comes out again. Brennan needs a completion here. Steps out, throws. That is complete, but only to Bryce Mullins for a very short game. That'll bring up third down long yardage. You just don't feel the electricity right now from the Warrior offense like how you felt in the first quarter, Jim. I mean, it was just electric. Everything was working, positive yards on every play. And now it's it just seems like it's a struggle. And I'm sure the Bulldogs have some to do with that, but it just seems like it's mostly on the Warriors. Pat Hill trying to wish a victory here tonight. He's been up and down the sidelines. He has been relentless. Third down, long yardage, third down and seven. Brennan to throw. Brennan spins away from one man, runs to the corner. He's at the 20. Oh, he gets nailed at the 23 yard line. And he is down. He is down and not moving. And even the Fresno State trainers are out. Oh, Marcus Riley just came up and hit Cole Brennan, and his head snapped back. I'm not even sure his feet are moving right now. But he just got mashed, mashed. You see Coach Jones over there on the sideline concerned. So both training staffs came out. I mean, you felt that, and so did the, the uh, Fresno State bench. I mean, they just celebrated that hit. So concern now, genuine concern for for Colt Brennan. We'll take a, some other looks at this because this is brutal. This, this whole is thing brutal. starts with number 91 coming free off the edge. Chris Carter forcing Brennan to pop out of the pocket. And that was a blast. You know, that was an intentional hit to the helmet and in the NFL he'd be fine for that that was helmet to helmet contact in the NFL you're fine for that college has not moved in that direction yet so June Jones has come across now to uh, take a look at his quarterback and they've, uh, I think they've given him some smelling salts. That's not good. That, that was, that was a hit. That you know you could say helmet to helmet, but you'd have to really look at the microscopic little things where the contact was actually made. Well, I love good football as much as anyone. Yeah. I love hard hits. You just hate to see anybody from any team potentially take a head injury, and they almost always occur either from helmet to helmet contact. Or when your helmet is driven into the astroturf or the grass. So he is up, which is good news. Which is good news. He looks very groggy. The thing is that uh, when you when you get into a position like that, when you're running around the end, and you are then open for a hit like that, you become a designated victim. That's true, and that's. One of the reasons why you will see quarterbacks slide feet first when anybody gets within five yards of them. But Colt is such a competitor that he just, it was third down. He really wanted to make something happen and get that first down. Uh, he's not 100% by any stretch of the imagination. That was just a, a huge hit uh, by uh, Marcus Riley. And June may be talking to the officials about helmet to helmet contact, just what you were mentioning. Well, I, I tell you, I had a couple concussions back when I played. And uh, one was given to me by Rich Miano in practice, actually. And, um, you know, I'll tell you, uh, he shows a lot of signs of it right now. He's squinting his eyes. Right, right. The lights are bright. Um, his head, he looks a little groggy. 
I think that the training staff is concerned. You know, you want to make sure that you do a correct diagnosis, and anytime there's potential helmet to helmet contact, there is even the chance for some kind of neck injury. His teammates love him. Hope Brennan will be helped off the field. Well, he's a true warrior, that's for sure. Coach uh, June Jones trying to have a case here for helmet to helmet. He's pleaded with all of the officials about that, but he's not getting any satisfaction. I mean, that was a brutal hit. And they're not walking him off to the sideline, Jim. They're walking him off towards the locker room. Yeah. And the crowd so appreciative of what he has done for this team. Ten forty three left. As Colt Brennan is really hit hard by Marcus Riley and has to leave the game. So it, it, it brings up fourth down and eight. Tim Grasso in. See if um, Fresno State, State tries to uh, block it. They do not. Ball comes to Smith. Smith is hit. Keenan Jones. I believe it was Keenan Jones with a double number there. Number 29, but I believe it was Keenan Jones who lowered the boom. I believe so too. He's listed as a defensive back. The crowd loves it. They love it. They want to see hit for hit. And I suspect in the last 10 minutes and 24 seconds, you are going to now see a lot of hitting because these Warriors are fired up watching Colt be taken off to the locker room. Clifton Smith in the backfield, along with Anthony Hardy. Crowd really into this one. First down for Fresno State. Grand Stater, back to pass, throws. That is complete to Smith, looking for running room. He is short of the first down as the black shirts gang up on him. Uh, this is going to be high intensity to the end. No question, Jim. The whole thing just got ratcheted up another notch. Colt Brennan is loved by every player on the UH team, and they are just angry as batting a hornet's nest. Second down, and about two. This is Miller. Miller into the secondary. Miller has that ability to just squeeze by tacklers. And an excellent run over midfield into Warrior territory. Purcell and Lewis finally stop this progress. But Fresno State moving the ball again. Miller squirts through the hole right here in the middle. You can see the Warrior defense just doing everything possible to lay a helmet to helmet hit right back. First down from the 49-yard line of Hawaii. Ball is given to Smith. Smith into the secondary. And the ball comes out. Let's see. Ball was ripped away by Carl Noah, but recovered by Fresno State. Here's Smith running. Solomon Elmenium gets his, you're right. It was Leonard. Leonard ripping it away again. Ryan Wendell finally recovered it for Fresno State. Second down. And three. Miller. And a first down to the 38 yard line of Hawaii. Desmond Thomas finally there to stop him. An old fashioned counter play where the line blocks down. They pull the two backside offensive linemen to clear around on the front side. So 
Well, Hawaii trying to stiffen here. Fresno State inexorably moving the ball. Anthony Harding on the wing. Van Stater looking, throws, that is complete to Smith. Smith is hit at the line of scrimmage. An excellent play by Brad Kalili Moku. That'll bring up second down. And now they will give him forward progress. We'll see. You see Solomon Alamemi coming in to put the pressure on. Brad Kalili Moku coming down and making a shoestring tackle. The Warriors have an outstanding linebacker core and they've showed it all year long. And there you saw two of the three making the play happen. Second down and seven. Clifton Smith. They fake it to him. Brand Stater looks, throws. That is complete. And now they say what? Incomplete. Ajiro Tutu was standing right on the sidelines. And he may have had uh, contact with the line. And I think Gerard Lewis helped separate the ball from him, Jim, as we see here on the replay. Yeah, he caught that ball inside, but the, the hit by Lewis separated the ball. Excellent defensive play. Third down. The crowd is going nuts. Saladas have heard it in years. Third down and eight. Here comes Hawaii. Ball is thrown over the middle. Incomplete. That will bring up fourth down. Hawaii comes with a blitz. Grand Center has to throw it away. So we'll see what happens here because the ball, the line of scrimmage, is the 36 yard line of Hawaii. Clint Stitzer will come in and he will try the extra point. Well, not the extra point, the field goal. You got to wonder about a fake right here. They're probably going to be in what's called safe, where they'll have at least five or six guys off the line of scrimmage. The Warriors, I mean. Colbert to hold. It is a fake. There's it's a, a pooch short. Pooch kick. Yeah, pooch kick coming down, coming down, and it will be touched at the one yard line, but there may be a penalty. Down. Uh, you see, Pat Hill, he, you can depend on him for this every game. I'll tell you, that was very, very well executed. They had uh, the, uh, I believe it was a center down there, right on the goal line, stopped it at the one, but it's all negated because of the penalty. So the penalty will move the ball back. Tried the field goal. A little pooch punt that ended up on the one, but the penalty moves it back. And so Zimmerman has come in, and he will punt it. In the air. Excellent hang time. Excellent hang time. Calling for the fair pass is Myron Newberry. Newberry gathers it in for Hawaii. 6.55 left to play in the game. Hawaii leads 37-23. Tyler Gronke on stage, please.
Yep, we are going to show you that hit again, not because uh, we take any joy in it, but show you the viciousness of it. Helmet to helmet. In the NFL, that would have been seventy-five or a hundred thousand dollars right there. Yeah, that was helmet to helmet, no doubt about it. First down. Tyler Gronke is now the quarterback for Hawaii. Gronke fumbles the ball. All right, that's out of the system. Well, it's a good thing you jumped on it. You know, Jim, we have called Tyler Gronke the best backup quarterback in the country. And he needs to come out right now and show everybody why we've said that and why June believes it. Gronke, 43 of 71 and passes 720 yards, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. So he comes in at a crucial time in this game. He is the heir apparent. Concern for Colt Brennan. They are probably going to uh, transport him to a medical facility. And down goes Gronke. Well, that wasn't really a coverage shot, Jim. That was basically the defensive lineman getting in there and sacking them before anybody could even get open. They really put the pressure on it right up the middle. John Manga. But we knew had a motor coming into tonight's game. Manga now. He came in to this game with six sacks. He now has seven. So big third down play here for Hawaii. Third and 17. Gronke in for Brennan. Gronke with it. And then lays it off to right Jackson. Jackson over the 20, short of the first down, gets to the 24 yard line. Marcus Riley, who um, obliterated Brennan, was there to make the stop on Wright Jackson. So Hawaii will have to put it away. The time, five minutes and 14 seconds left. Hawaii trying to win its ninth in a row. But that would be history. No University of Hawaii team has ever been able to have that record of nine and oh. Brasso's first punt was 36 yards. He'll have to root it here. Letting all the clock tick down. Good job by Tim Grasso. Good snap. Gets the punt away. Not a good punt. Bounces at about the 45 goes to the sidelines, and Hawaii stops it there. Excellent field position here for um, Fresno State, only a 30 yard punt by Grasso. A reminder that Central Pacific Bank sponsors the loyalty award by donating $100 for every touchdown. Hawaii scores Central Pacific Bank fiercely loyal banking. June Jones looks up at the clock, four minutes and 34 seconds. Here's a Fresno State. They said this would be a bruising battle, and it has been. And it is not over yet. There you see what Brand Stater has done. He is going for two touchdowns. Brand Stater back to pass. Looking, now throws over the middle. That's incomplete and almost intercepted. That was intended for, for a Kinter. Jacob Patek was playing deep there, almost gathered it in. That'll bring up second down. That stops the clock with four minutes and 29 seconds left. Well, you get the impression that Kinter doesn't have the ball throw to him that often because that was right in and out of his hands. Good break for the Warriors. Crawley and Ajiro Tutu are going to the far side. No flag. Ball is thrown. That's complete to Smith. And down he goes. And now the flag is thrown. Could be offside against Hawaii. Coachman. There's actually two flags on the play. I wonder if there's uh, offsetting penalties potentially. So the. Offsides. Defense number 12. Holding offense number 73. The penalties will offset. Replay second down. Take a look at the penalty uh, on Fresno State. The holding on Mel Purcell. 
There you see Monty Purcell right here. here. Yeah. Oh yeah, he yanked the arm. Good job by Kalili Moko on Smith that time. Second down and ten. Brad Stater back with time. Looks to the sideline, throws to the sideline, incomplete. He wanted Smith. Good coverage there by Carl Noah. That'll bring up third down. Excellent coverage in the defensive backfield by Hawaii. That stops the clock with three minutes and 54 seconds. Well, every game has a few defining moments when you look back on them, and this will be one of them, Jim. This third and 10 right here. This is crucial for both teams. Crawley and Moore are to the far side. Ajiro Tutu to the near side. Crowd getting into it again. Ball is given to Smith, trying for the first down. Can't get there. Smith had openings when he broke into the secondary, but then they closed up. They're going to have to go for it, Jim. They're down two scores. There's three minutes and 40 seconds left. They can't afford to punt it away. Now nah, they've got to go for it. I agree. Here comes Hawaii. Changing. Changing the personnel. Michael Lafaele comes into the middle. Empty backfield. Five receivers. Fourth and three. Brand Stater looks, throws. That is complete for the first down. What a catch by Kinter because Kinter turned around and the ball was right there. I take back what I said a few plays before. That was an awesome catch by Kinter. And that reception was clutch. First down for Fresno State now at the Hawaii 40 yard line. Brand Stater back to pass again. Throw sideline. That is. Let's see, is that caught? That is caught at the, at the 30 yard line. That's to Ajiro Tutu. Stops the clock. Yep. Got his knee inbounds. Two minutes and 49 seconds left. Fresno State's got to score now. Got to take some shots. Let's see if they do it. Clock is running. Two minutes and 40. Branstader. Back to pass. Branstader now throws. Crossing pattern. That is complete to Crawley. All the way down to the 21. And Branstader beginning to really put the pressure on the Hawaii defensive secondary. Now they huddle. Rather, now they don't huddle. And it's 2.09 left. Adam Leonard gave Branstader a how are you doing hit. No call. Ball at the 22. Grand Stater again with time. Throws over the middle. That's complete. And that's complete to Ajiro Tutu. And that's enough for the first down. Grand Stater is hot. He's got the hot hand. And he is decimating the Hawaii defense. But they have not scored yet. It is 37 to 23 with 152 left to play in the game. Hope Brennan has been taken off the field. We cannot diagnose from where we are, but it was serious. Time out. How about you?
After the conclusion of the regular season schedule, Ms. Ariel Chung, Chief Executive Officer of the University of Hawaii Federal Credit Union, will present each Warrior senior with a plaque to honor his commitment and success as a University of Hawaii student athlete. Congratulations to all the Warrior seniors from UHFCU. Well, Jim, it doesn't look like anybody's left the stadium here with a minute 47 left, and I bet you you're going to start hearing all 40, 45,000 plus go nuts. The motion is more. They overload the right side. Grandstetter throws to the end zone. He wants a touchdown. Leaping catch was he in? No. That ball was intended for Jason Crawley, and covering on the play was Myron Newberry. So Newberry called on for a clutch defensive move there, and the ball was thrown a little too high. Warriors in full blitz. Man-to-man -man coverage. Incomplete. Second down. Clock is stopped. One forty-two left. Brown Stater waiting for the snap. He gets it, fumbles it, is hit, down he goes. Keeps the clock moving. Ryan Mouton was there. Now Fresno State. Calls their last timeout. This is their last that timeout. That was huge. That was huge. Ball tumbles away from him. And then he draws a crowd. Mouton able to roll him, roll him down as he rolls over him. You can see the the acrobatics of that defensive line. I mean, they were twisting, they were flying all over the place trying to get to him. I tell you what, Jim, those two timeouts that the Bulldogs called earlier in the second half are going to come back to haunt them if they have any chance to stay in this game. Because they can't stop the clock again on this drive. Of course they're going to go for an onside kick. If they don't get it, game over. Yeah. As the people depart from this stadium to participate in gargantuan Honolulu traffic yet another time, they will be thinking about Colt Brennan, his condition, whether he can play next week. They will be thinking about him because Colt Brennan has such a personality that everybody likes him. The players like him. The students like him. The people of Hawaii like him. The coaching staff likes him. So we are very concerned about his condition. Third down. Third and 15. Tinter in motion. Double wides. Right center throws over the middle. That is complete touchdown. Marlon Moore, that's his second touchdown catch. And here comes Fresno State, 20-yard touchdown reception. And what a job by the quarterback, Tom Branstader. He was terrific. And now... It's a big extra point. A big extra point. One has already been missed by Stitzer. Ball is down. This is kicked. And this is good. And it is nail-biting time. 37 to 30. We know Fresno State with the, the special teams that they do. Their special teams coach, John Baxter. They've got to have an onside kick up their sleeve. Something that they probably haven't shown yet this season, Jim. Well, I, you have to be impressed with the way uh, Brian Stater just decimated the Hawaii secondary pass after pass, <coughs> yards after yards. And then he hit more again. Bank of Hawaii presents our choice for tonight's most valuable players. Bank of Hawaii salutes these two deserving players. Fresno State, A.J. Jefferson, 245 return yards in this game and a touchdown, 98-yard kickoff return. And Brad Kalili Moko, six tackles and 2.5 sacks. Hawaii will have its hands team out there. This game may depend on this kick. And the way college football has gone this year, I mean, you got to toss a coin because it'll be the bounce of the ball.
Stitzer will try the onside. There it is. High in the air. It is fumbled. It may be Fresno State's ball. It may be. No, it's Hawaii's We're calling ball. calling it Hawaii. Hawaii's ball. Fresno State's going crazy. That was close. That was close. They're calling for the trainers, it looks like. Hawaii comes up with it. Coming up with it is Desmond Thomas. So the trainers are coming across. Just Jason Rivers was down there on the bottom of the pile. Now you see the ball comes away from Rivers, but Thomas dives in and saves it for Hawaii. Three running plays. And it's over. Should seal the deal. Yep. 129 left. We'll have another look at this because this is really close. It was close. an excellently executed onside kick getting the ball up. Jason Rivers had the ball right there. Desmond Thomas gets on top of it somehow. Thank God for the Warriors. So here's Tyler Gronke. Gronke is not going to, to go under center. Gronke's going to run the offense. He keeps inside the 40, dives to the 35 yard line, and the clock keeps ticking. Fresno State cannot stop it. Hawaii will be if they don't fumble the ball and, you know, you start running the offense, that's a possibility. No, anything can happen, but you'd like to be in Hawaii's position right now, knowing that you can eat the clock. And just do simple running plays. They didn't even do a, a quarterback exchange right there. They just let Tyler keep the ball. That's, That's right. That's probably what you'll keep on seeing. Now he will go and take a knee. As uh, the clock is inside of a minute. This will be a victory for Hawaii. They will be 9 and 0. They'll be 6 and 0 in the WAC. And looming is a short week. And a game at Nevada. And Colt Brennan injured. I certainly hope as long as everybody else does. When I saw him down at the field, I instantly flashed back to the young man at the press conference earlier this year that said, I'm coming back for Hawaii. 17, last play, and it's over. Hawaii wins it 37 to 30. A spirited comeback try by Fresno State. But Hawaii able to hold on for the win. And you can see the concern in the Jim Jones face as he comes across to shake hands with Pat Hill.
There you see the final score, 37 to 30. This Red Star moment is sponsored by Heineken. It's all about the beer, and it all came down to this. This was the onside kick. If you watch the ball, it comes over. First one to it for Hawaii is Jason Rivers. He can't hold it, but coming in was Desmond Thomas on the bottom of that pile, and he would not give it up. Hope you could see that Fresno State really wanted that. There you see the conference standings now. Hawaii and Boise State at 6-0. Hawaii at 9-0. Boise State at 9-1. Fresno State drops to 5-2, and 6-4 and overall. Next week, it's Nevada. 3-2 and two in the conference. 5-4, and four, another winning record. But the, the concern here, and we'll, if, if we may be given a moment, the concern here is the, the quarterback, Colt Brennan. He is important to this team. Very important. You know, Jim, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And we're all hoping the best for Colt. Uh, hopefully he can bounce back quickly and be ready for this Friday game. Uh, I'd like to close out by saying thank you very much for the, giving me the opportunity to work with you and be a part of this magnificent season. Well, right back at you, big guy. Right back at you. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who tuned in this year to take part in the home team's coverage of UH football. Good luck to June Jones. Good luck to Colt Brennan and the Warriors the rest of the way as they continue with what, with what we hope will be the most successful season in the history of the University of Hawaii football team. In fact, it already is. Until next time, this is Jim Leahy for a great K-5 crew. Take care, everybody.